Good afternoon, everybody. I trust that we've been having a swell time in God's presence. So in view of this, can we rise on our feet as we begin to appreciate the name of the Lord? Can we rise, can we rise and say, Father, thank you for how well you have begun this meeting with us. Can we give him glory and give him praise? Thank him because God indeed has begun on a good note with us. I don't know how many of you have seen this since last night, but this has been my position. Can you lift up your voice as you say, Father, thank you. Thank you for opening me up. I don't know how you want to be this afternoon or this evening, rather. The level of your posture should be that of a sincere man. Can you lift up your voice and say, Father, of all sincerity, I thank you because you have been chiseling me up. You have been opening every of my dead parts. Can you lift up your voice and say, Father, thank you. Because it is not of, God will not come for many people the way he has come for us in this season. It's not a time to look. I know you are heavy. You are, you are, I know that the, the burdens are heavy and there are so much that you want to ventilate. But this is the time to ventilate those matters. And you need to start by a thanksgiving and say, Father, thank you. Thank you for how well you have been dealing with us on this mountain. Can you lift up your voice and say, Father, thank you. Lord, we glorify your name. Blessed be your name, O God. Eshanda branama nakabusi de branda barabias kabanama. Embele branda beraske benabo shi de branda barata setepa. Akam bebe bebolu ande si de branda barata sem de braska pataliaba. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for coming so strong for me on this mountain. I don't know about you, but this is a mountain that I came to seek the face of the Lord, and indeed I have been seeing Him through the word that has been coming my way. A branda bo sopa branda barabina shando broske pata. Ambele mende kiza zede branta bababonda grabadaba libra tanda bababa. Some of us came with robust expectation, expecting that we are going to see the heavens open and then visions will just begin to prophecies will begin to pop out like that. Embe shida branda baraba, not knowing that God was coming to show us our nakedness as a people and even as a nation. And mina sande bradaba. And the reason why it is like this is because God is not true with us. Yet and the brenda masa the brisco patan the breliaba amina amanda combro se de paradi ashaba. This is not a time to reserve those utterance, those those words that have been rub, running inside you. This is not a time to reserve them. This is a time to pour out yourself before Him and say, Father, thank you because you have not left us without a witness in this season. I share ne mamando breske pata ilarando breske patun ne braskaba. Barate seto patamba tapata mento belibra namba babuna ambo ne monse brapa papa ambraska patamba papo le pranda bani manenta aye preske patambraska papa palabra repetende preske patape la prando pruse pata ambe te pete panta shaba dabo ebrido 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 irabanta seto pranta papa pa raba to set upon the press the patapila pronda amina tapente set up patambolia ba jet the panda praska patamboli pranta papa pa amba tapata pa embete pete 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 pata pranta ba epe shamba bambo prete set up papa pa embrata pa can you be sincere with yourself this evening ambete pete pete pata pala pranta amba pa prata set up papa pa japa tapa as minister of the gospel, can you be sincere with yourselves this evening? I'm better, better, brand up, papa, papa, bread, the bread, the bamba, papa, bloody shepherdiba, repete, pete, 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 papa, I'm a brat, a pat, a brand up, papa, Lord, thank you for revealing my nakedness, thank you for revealing my a year, better, papa, and that my nakedness was not revealed outside in the public, a pat, a brand up, papa, papa, is a teen, is an is an in house. Mata, a pen de branda papa, a shed de papa, 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 lia papa, and petapa. It was not given to the devil to reveal, and peli papa, 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 lapo, a petapamba, brata, satepo, shabba, papa, 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 papa. Are 
you thanking God? Repetela, repetela, repetela. Ambata pata sata pala prata papa pa. Embete pata pata papa papa. Amba papa papa. It is not a time to conserve energy. Apete penda pala prata pa. I understand that the weight of the Lord that has been coming are heavy and they are massive. Embete pa. Brete pata pa. In a moment, we begin to ask God for help to carry on with this burden. Apele brete pa. I commend the patua, a prate send a man, a pranda prata papranda papra, rapatan de preste patula prando, a pida prando polia pamprata. Lord, we thank you. A set the panta pata pranda papa, and pata prata pata prata papa. No wonder in John chapter 17, when Jesus was giving his testimony, he said, The priest of this world cometh and he finds no place in me. Amen. Can you just imagine with that laziness, with that, with that structure that we have been building? If the devil has come to check and then he finds a yipatapa, a loophole, and petapata branda papapola, and brisa tande brata pata prata, bread the prata papa prata. Some of us don't know for how long that the Lord Himself has been keeping the hands of the enemy backward from us. Lord, thank you, Asata Palaprata, for bringing me close again. Nanda Prata Palaprata. No wonder scripture speaking in Hebrews. He said, For those he loves, it is those he loves that he chastises. Can you see the love of Christ upon you now and begin to appreciate him? Anate Kaya Prata Kappa and Lebrata Kappa Labrata Yakopo Kopo Papa. Can you see the love of Christ now and say, Father, thank you? Ebraka Papa Prata and the Branda Prata Prata Sato things that we are guilty of. If the devil was given a chance to judge us, I tell you, none of us will be standing. Because many a times, we make public show of him. And But it was the hand of the Lord that stayed him from reaching us. For lavishing your love on me, I de and Thank you for bringing your correction rod again into your house. Ayade, ayade kapala brata papa, epeto kamba dodia, ala brata bada brata papa, ala brata papa brata papa, abakwata kapala brata. Of my enemy, I would rather die in the hands of my God. For no matter how he chastises me, Lord, I will stay with you. I'm Becca Bada Proliaba, a Prata Papa 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 Pacata, La Prata Banda Prata. But first, I thank you because you did not leave me out there. Thank you for bringing me close. Thank you for drawing me in. It was not because I had the funds to travel. That's not why you brought me. That was now. That was not why there was an allowance. There was an allowance because you loved me. Because you want to show me a different side of you. I covered the mandila, brata. I 
are you thanking God? Sincere this evening, and met the pata brata papa and brata papa papa papa. Some of us, if they have left us for the bloggers to judge, and then mantata brata, our mess will be everywhere. I pay the bread to patatua, a pata brata pata papa. Thank you for bringing your rod. I yebe to pata brata papa, a brata papa brata papa. I understand this because you love me, and better. To put up on tato, a breed of brat of tapata, a brat of sand of brat of tapata, a brat of tapata, a 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 We saw and better brata pato prato, brasata pata papa, but yet as the Lord gets you and patato poto patatua, and better better to pashanto patatua, and rupata tata parato petakia, a patato to pata pata prato sato, a patata pata 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 If you slay me, I'm pata pala prata papa papa. Lord, I will stay with you. I'm pata prata papa papa pua. Beshata papa papa prata. I'm pata pata prata papa papa. And forever, oh God, I will find cause to give you thanks because it is better to die in the hands of God than to die in the hands of devils. A payate pata brando. Lipa pam prata tata to pata. Your voice be louder and brata kapa la brata papa na kapa tako shakwa tata eko paka toko papa brata la kato koto kopoko ele brata kapa ta brata papa brata pa many times many of us never knew how we got into a race with men and brata 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 kapa papa pa we began to compare ourselves with another and better kapa la brata kapa. That was where the pressure came in. And better brata kapa la brato papa. And papa pa brata pata brato. And peko papa 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 papa. And papa brata papa papa. But I thank my God. 
that he did not wait until the devil came to check me. He did not wait until the priest of my territory came to check me. A cobra cabranda brato, breast pata kapala pata baba. He brought me again to the dressing floor. And brata brata brado saba. And brata brata branda pala brata baba. The reason being that my wine, oh God, will not be a state wine. That my wine, oh God, will not be spilled along the street of wherever region where I came from. My God, my God. Shift the go post. I'm pata brata tata pata pa. I'm pata po shaba. What what an horrific character. I'm pata tata pala brata. Meto brata pala brata pala brasco. Kemato shabrata. La cobrata sato proko parapa. Mante kato copa paprata kapa. Rapa tata tata ta. Rapa tata tata ta. Toto tapa. on God but you see as time progresses our waiting has shown a high level of disbelief and the Bible speaking he said for those who must come to God they must first believe that he is and he is the reward and when your, this, when your belief is shifted uh, and there is no more faith, uh, I tell you there is little but nothing that you can do, even in that territory, even in that assignment. Uh, so it was an issue of, the, of, of disbelief. And the man cried out and said, Oh God, he said, Help thou my own belief. He said, Yet even though I believe, uh, but Lord, help my own belief. There are so many things that the Lord will be helping tonight. Except you still want to assume the position of you being the builder by yourself. But the last time I checked the scriptures, the Bible says that the Lord is the one that built it. And every man that builds, if they build outside his template, they build but in vain. I know how heavy the burden can be and the devil might just want to seize your mouth. No, this is the time to cry out for help. This is not the time to just go moody. And when you leave the conference, suddenly we begin to hear strange news about you. That the pastor left and the next thing he went to hang himself. No, sir. 
matter. This is the time to treat that matter before God. Open your mouth and say, Lord, help me, 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 in that angle in that position lord help me you can as well begin to imagine yourself even in some kind of mess that you are aware that your flesh cannot help you with you can go ahead and say, oh God, even if this matter comes the way I just thought about it, uh, Lord, I need your help. Your help is what I came to seek for. If Saul has realized uh, that the only one he, he can ask for help from was the Lord himself, uh, ay, 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 uh, he wouldn't have gone to the priest. Uh, he would have channeled his cause to the Lord. And who knows, perhaps, uh, that the Lord would have encountered him early enough uh, and then help his heart and restructure his mind and the kind of assignment that he should be doing for the body. But no, he sought for help from somewhere else. And the kataka palabrato, epeka brada parada, la to 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 to, epeta pata brata palaba, eshada palabrata pa 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 pa, epata brata sade pala, pala 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 pata, apata pata pata pa pa pa, apata pata pata pa 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 pa, brato brodo, brato brodo, brato brodo, brato brodo, brato brodo, embete bete pa. Can you lift up your voice and say, Father, my help, oh God, my help, can you come to my aid on this matter? Can you come to my aid? If there is more that you need to do, Lord, I am open. I won't hide in shame and in silence. How good is it that the Lord came so early for us? So that we can begin to angleize ourselves and begin to put ourselves in different positions where we know that He can meet us on time. Some of us are just the reason why that encounter has been delayed for so long. Come on, can you pray? Shed the barata kaba. Can you pray? Shakwata tapara panato. Let up rata pam prata sataba. Bakwata tapara de kapana. Meto to prata prata papa. I came with a sincere heart. I'm better grada parabada prato. Lipa rusete tua. A prasta prata prata tapa. Rata Santa Barato Shata Akakakako Bara Baraquata Tata Papa Prata and Baluata Tata Prataka a Prata Santo Polo a Pepe 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 Baraquata Tua Baraquata Tua Braquata Tua 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 Tua
one of the adjectives that was used to qualify the Holy Ghost and his coming is that he's going to be your helper. He's going to be my helper. Can you lean on him tonight and say, Holy Ghost, help me, help me, help me. I trust in you for help. I don't take this woman for granted. of blind Bartimaeus, he needed his voice to be louder. Why? Because there were so many people who could shut him up. He needed his voice to be heard of the master. I know there are many voices right now inside you trying to condemn you and trying to make you believe that you can no longer seek your help. Brothers, sisters, I tell you, it is a lie. If only you can shut the sound of that voice and cry and say, Oh Lord, incline my heart to you. I said, the brother, brother, papa, brother, Lord, incline my heart. I said, to what that can you let your voice be louder? And if you can even come out from the prayer and look at that devil that is speaking to your heart and say, devil, devil, be gone from here. Yes, you can go ahead and do that. There is allowance. Because God did not raise you to lose you. God did not raise me to lose me. There was a reason why he raised me. Akayade prosada palabra. I will he feel if I appear before him that day and he said, Go behind me. You walk as of iniquity. Though there was a walk, but the walk was unto iniquity. Can you be sincere this evening and cry to him? Draw strength, ayah. Draw strength, draw strength, brother. Draw strength. Not tell the brother, palaba. I'm but the brother, pala. Shaka pa, 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 shaka pa. Brata, 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 brata,
Some of us, it was the praise of men. Oh, that brother. Oh, that sister. What a wonderful ministration. And that was what took us out. And then we began to, oh God. Oh my God. Let the Incline my heart, incline my heart. A better brother said a brother, poor atom, better, better brother, papa. A pata, 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 for until your heart is inclined, you will never understand that with the father's handed over to Rosa. And when there is no understanding, abuse is inevitable. I eco brata sande broquata, la de demo catige, a chaton pota brada parata, la tato brata capa la prolia, a yato coco comba dapa, la brada parada brata pa, who adela, a watata brata pa, bratata brata caba, a bratata pata, a bratata pata, a bratata. I came from a city where every now and then every minister that rises to time always want to make reference to the late Archbishop Bessie in the house. And I ask a question after how many years? And why I ask that question, I came to understand that in the days where God was looking for men in this time, he was not the first person that God beckoned on. There was a man, and up till now, that man is still alive, but there is nothing attached to him. Nobody makes reference to him. Can you pray and say, Lord, help me, help me, help me. Help me, help me, help me. Yes, there's every tendency that I will keep making reference. Meanwhile, God rest me for a purpose. Why, Young man, is this how you pray? The Lord will need to see your sincerity in your heart. It's a stretch, it's a stretch. Don't think we're going to stop anytime soon. Shako Kiminand Brata Kate Broska Late Teko Brata Tapa Late Toka Dakado Kabinaka Late Tete Brata Sadia Parabata Brata 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 Ka Lebrete Pata Brata Papa Brata Lebrete Brata Kapalako Sanda Atoa Atoa in case you are conserving energy and you think because you have been fasting that you will die when you cry I tell you you will not die because when Jesus prayed that man at Gethsemane the Bible said he got to that point where his sweat became as thick as blood that was where he offered himself from Territory. 
Brada Baba Brada Brada Barada Bara Brada Barada Bonacao you have limited time to press. Can you press? Can you press? Can you hold upon the horns of prayers again and say, Lord, this is what my life depends on. This is what my life depends on. Nothing more, Kaba, but you will go. I am the bread of Barra. In the days when God are looking for men, God will find me standing. It will no longer be a saying in my days uh, that I saw for a man and I found no. It will no longer be a saying in my life. Uh, I shoot a card, brother. Yes, you need to begin to make those commitments now and say, Lord, by your help, by your help, by your help, by your help, I run to a troop. By your help, I leap over the walls. By your help. Kaya kade nemo, la kaya dada, li, eruata do, la de branda rabana tuo, li gadaga diga diga do, shato, 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 atwa, abato per, baka brata bara, barata bara, barata bara, barata tata, barata tata, barata tata. Oh mena na na no, oh mena na na no, oh mena adus, 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 Salvation is with you. 
it is with joy that you can draw. You need to shake that thing off now. Shake that heavy weight that is seeming to be like depression now. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. I say, Lord, I start afresh with you. Don't stop, don't let anything confuse you. This is a matter between you and God. I know that you will not be the one to take the glory at the end of it. But yes, it will be my joy when I see the master say, Well done. That good and faithful servant. What a joy it will be by the time we gather again next year and the Lord begins to open the heavens for us to see things. Hey, hey, nothing left in mysteries anymore. Nothing left in mystery. The preparation begins now. It begins now. Why are the other Malado? Why are the other Monoko Radia? I shut the other Radi Monoko. Lada Dado Bodo Bodi Balabrada. Why are you taking this? I don't it. Rada Dada Baba Baba. I can't tell her. I can't tell her. Why are the Balabrada Balaba? The Brada Balabrada Balaba. Prayer point has still not changed. Lord, it bless my heart. It's a matter of the heart. Lord, by your hand, I am dead, the brother. What I simply do tonight is that I submit myself before you. That you will incline my heart. No matter what it takes. Incline me, oh God. Oh, 
speaking, he said, brethren, I count it not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I forget those things which are behind, and I reach forth into those things which are before me. How is the question? He said, I press towards the mark of the price of the highest call. He's a pressing. If you have ever seen a presser before, you will know that it's not easy to get a result from pressing is not easy. So in case they have told you that you can just get it quick, not here. And you're going to pray this night again. I say, Lord, help me to be able to press. Some of us got to a point where we lose it and then we became lazy. Which we took our focus off from who the price ought to be. And then we began to follow what the standard of men. I will pray and say, Lord, help me to put my face, my focus, my focus on Jesus. Every time you see the cross, I tell you, you, you your heart will be weak. A man called me recently and was telling me how that he had, the devil has been messing up with his life. And then he didn't know when he told me one of the recent secrets that he went through. He impregnated a girl, the girl did abortion. And that was it. And why I gave him encouragement for a long time. I wanted to say goodbye. It was just it was a, 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 on WhatsApp. And then the next thing, the Holy Ghost reminded me, said, This matter, as, as he revealed it to his wife, and I asked him, I said, Hold on, before you go, have you told your wife about your sexual immorality? He said, No, sir. That's about two months ago. No, sir. He had been living with the woman. The woman knew about the sin. Had complained and yet it ended him up in this kind of mess. And before you know it, when I told him my encouragement, I said, Go and tell your wife. One hour later, he called back. He said, Sir, please, can you just pray for Say a word of prayer. I said, What do you need prayer for? He said, Because strength is leaving me. My, my, my breath is no longer going now. I said, Okay, you went to be thinking. I said, Go and tell your wife. You went to be thinking. So there are matters that you cannot relate with people until God helps you. Can you pray and say, Lord, help me to fix my eyes. Help me to fix my eyes on you. 
sometimes when I hear of all these experiences, I'm like, God, how, how do you? And yet, we lift up holy hands. We are people together. We come together and we lift up holy hands. Pretending amongst ourselves. Jesus, help me. Help me that I will not die in that matter. Shed upon a crowd there. God came to help some people, but I doubt if they are seeing that help right now. As we let you with my brother just now, I told him, I said, it's a matter of everybody, it's not a matter of one person. Lika brother, brother. And so Paul came and said, I did not count myself to have apprehend. I did not count myself to have reached there. Lika Palabra But there is one thing I do. I put everything behind me and then I begin to reach out onto the prize of the highest call. There is a prize that is higher than where I am now. Lick a brother palapa. Until God help you to see that prize. Brother, you will not be ready. You will not be ready to move forward. That's why some of us are stagnated. We are head bound in one place. Can you say, Lord, help me, help me, help me? Lata tene, brother, bala, brother, bala. The experience for Ezekiel was not just on the ankle level. The experience for Ezekiel was not just on the new level. How come you have only stayed with the ankle level for this long? How come you have remained with the new level and now is on your waist? And now, Lagaida, brother, bala, brother, bala. your head is just above the water and you are still looking and saying, That's right, that's right. Lord, I have gotten there. I think I've gotten there. No, sir. No, ma. We have not gotten there. There is a place where we need to go to. And when we make an appearance without uttering a voice or a word, kingdom of darkness has shaken from their foundation. Of the seven sons of Stephen, the demon looked at them, the demon possessed looked at them and said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know who are thou. There are certain levels you cannot use to deal with a higher dimension of principality. When you appear, they will ask you, who are you? Because you have not gotten there yet. But I tell you, you can reach there by virtue of this meeting and say, Lord, help me to fix my gaze. Help me to fix my gaze. I didn't come to create a reunion. I didn't come to make friends. I didn't come to collect contact. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, it appears that that's what most of us do. We come to collect ministers of the gospel's contact, and then we are looking forward to invite them. And then you can take a posture, a posture, and then you say, Yes, myself and apostle. That time is no more. We don't have that time, sir. We don't have that time. Some of us came and said, Yes, this is a good time to see the apostle. And the matter is beginning to change before you. What I mean now is that you can change your prayer, you can reposition your heart by the help of God and say, Lord, I can carry you from this place. Yes, my vessel can carry you. My vessel can carry you. No matter how small I may look in the eyes of men, my vessel can carry you. If only you can help me. Help me to fix my eyes on the prize. I had that the brother, brother. I came to win Jesus to my life. I came to win him inside. I had that they broke up around. Lada brother, bala brother. Can you be intentional right now? Can you press on? Abana balabo. Balabo na manana. Amana mana mana. Amana mana ma. Amana mana na beda. Manta brother bala brother ba. Aba shada bala ba. Gideon was one man that was sincere. When the angel of the Lord came and said, Now mighty man of valor. He just said, Oh God, for we, for we, how, how, how come we are not seeing those things that our fathers told us? How come the 
force of Pyelton is still hanging in the air like a brain and Mananda. Some of us have got into the retired age and we are saying the next generation for where it is my generation. We will carry the fire everywhere. We will, oh my God, we will turn the world upside down for Christ. Lebron Amanda, brother, there will be nothing left untaught in my era. But Lord, help me to fix my gaze. Help me to fix my gaze. I go, brother, bona, lada, brother, balada, pow, Adam, bada, bada, mana, pola, lada, brother, bada, 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 Send up and yama. Up, 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 Many are waiting for this your rising brother. Many are waiting for this your rising sister. El brother brother Sonia. Shadabella brother. They are waiting to see when you will arise. They are waiting to know when you will arrive. I bet the press said the brother. They are waiting to see when you will leave your people and then become a help to them again. I bet the man to buy a I be lo branda de sopetia, a branta sede brede parao, perro brete sede para, sede pele pavaria, perrata panto sede brao. standing in honor of Jesus, not of man. God bless you. Thank you. Honor Jesus. Be upstanding. We want to worship our King. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. We bless your name. We give you praise, Jesus. Ah, thank you, Then he found me, oh, his love for me. Who am I that the highest king will welcome me? I was lost, yet he found me, oh, his love for me. Yes, his love. The sun sets free. You can join. Oh, it's free. Make it yours. I'm a child of God. Yes, I Yes, I am. Pull the sound. 
king proud that he was a welcome faithful servant Please don't stop until I lose. 
Say something good unto the Lord this evening. Say the Lord, you are ready, you are willing to run with Him. This our heavenly rest we run to the end. God helping us. 
Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just appreciate Him. As much as appreciate Him, secure grace that you will run the race. You will run the race to the end. It will not be said of you on that last day, step aside. I never know thee. Let's not lose touch of the emphasis that we receive in the morning. Who sent you? Did you send yourself? Or it is he that has sent you? We came in his presence that we will receive a touch. That he will help us. That our toys, our labors, our service unto him will not be in vain. I remember a man called Ahimas. When he saw a turmoil, he did not understand exactly what happened. And he decided to run to go and take David. Probably he wanted favor from David. While he ran, he was instructed not to run. It is not your turn to run. He said, yes, I know. Nevertheless, let me run. But when he ran, and he came before David, and David asked him, what happened? He could not say anything because it was not his turn to run. He was running with wind and shadows. He wanted to say, Lord, may I not run in vain? May I not run in vain? In the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated in a moment. I want to bring a prayer charge. You know, the matters that we received in the morning were quite heavy. Some people came greeting me with Jesus. I said, please hold your peace. Hold your peace. Sometimes believers don't know when to be serious and when to joke. You want to bring the story of 1930. It has no value. I said, please hold your peace. I want to read the book of Numbers 32. I read from verse 10. And the Lord's anger was kindled the same time and his swear saying, the anger of the Lord was kindled. He swear saying, surely none of these men that camp up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear. I was in Israel. And I went towards the Mount Nebo. We stood upon, it, it may not be the same spot, but we stood upon the, the top of the mountain. We could see the promised land. We could see the Golan Heights. And the tall guard told us that this was where Moses stood, and the Lord showed him the promised land. But he could not enter. Why? Because at some point, he yielded to the pressure that came upon him from the children of Israel. These things I read. Say, surely none of the men that came out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land. We are only cares. Moses was privileged. He saw the land. This one, they did not even see the land. Which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me. You know, Paul says, I was not disobedient to the heavenly visions. If we check the book of Ephesians, in spite of the knowledge, the excellence of knowledge that Paul had, why would say in, in Philippians say he count it as dung, and he followed the Lord wholly. And in the book of Numbers thirty-two is an account of the children of. If we read on, it was only Caleb and Joshua the son of Nun that could make it onto the promised land. The entire generation, millions of people that left Egypt, when the anger of the Lord was kindled, it was only 2019 below that God decided to continue the rest week. Remember, he told Moses, he said, I will wipe away this generation and I will start a new nation with you. But Moses pleaded on behalf of Israel. 
You see, when they talk about the coming of the Lord, the coming of the Lord, many of us take it for granted. God is coming and he's coming to judge this church. It doesn't cost God anything to wipe away. He did it before. During the flood, he destroyed mankind. And God dwells in eternity. He's not affected by time. Such that you are 90 years old, you are depleted of strength, you can, you can no longer walk. God dwells in time. Time, sorry, time dwells in God. So he holds times and seasons in his hands. If a generation did not arose to stand with God and to labor with God, God do not mind to take that entire generation away. But I believe the Lord that God will help us. We will not just hear these things and still be victims. Amen. So 20 years and below, they could not see the promised land. In the book of Joshua, you know, Joshua and Caleb were the ones that made it. Joshua 24. If we read from verse 44, 14. Say, now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods. Somebody help me say idols. That was the emphasis we stumbled upon in the morning. That the Lord Jesus was speaking to his servant. That there are gods. There are idols in the hearts of men. And in the case of Joshua, you know, Joshua was about to die. I didn't want to leave the children of Israel without a witness. So he gathered the entire Israel and told them, expounded unto them how God was faithful in keeping his covenant, beginning from the core of Abraham. How by his mighty stretched arm, he brought them out from the land of slavery. How they walked upon dry ground by the supernatural ability. How he fed them in the wilderness. How by night he was with them with a pillar of fire. And in the, day, in the daytime, the pillar of cloud. So at this point, Joshua was about to gather himself to his, to his, to his fathers. And he said, put away those gods which ye, your father served on the other side. It was those gods that they served on the other side that God could not continue with them. So Joshua took note of history and the things that happened before then. And as he was about to pass on, he said, put away, put away all those gods on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. Say, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye shall serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the floor, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. My charge is simple. Because sometimes we easily forget. When God drops emphasis, we labor upon it a while, and then it's as if God does, does not just bring emphasis. The issue of other gods is a thing of importance to God. If we remember the patriarch Jacob, when he was about to return and lay hold of the promise that was hanging upon his life. He called his household together and he commanded them, put away every other strength God that you have. It is time to return to our maker. And we ask at what point did they beckon unto other gods? Sometimes, you know, the devil is very soft. To you. The devil can crept in unawares. And you cannot tell exactly when you let your door open and the enemy introduce another God and carelessly the God has become the chief God in your life. But like Joshua, Joshua instructed them to put away those gods and choose ye this day whom you will serve. If those gods are so important to you, if those gods will deliver you, then serve them. If those gods will not deliver you, then 
serve the Lord. And he said, as for him and his house, we will serve the Lord. And as I raise my prayer, I want to bring another emphasis from the New Testament, the book of Hebrew. Hebrew 12, and I believe it's 28, as I bring my prayer there. Hebrews 12. Because Joshua reminded them that they should serve the Lord. If you remember when he called Moses, he told Moses, go to Pharaoh, tell my people. Sorry, he told Pharaoh. Sorry, he told Moses. Say, Moses, go to Pharaoh. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go. The essence of letting his people go was not just to, to be free lands, that they might serve the Lord. And I'd like for you to know that so long as you do not serve God with your intelligence, with your beauty, with your resources, with the endowment God has given you, I assure you will serve another thing. You will not know when you bow down to something else and you will still be speaking in tongues, but you are already bowing down to that same thing. Until you be fully committed to the service of God. And that was the key secret of Joshua. Joshua said, as for me, he was, yeah, yeah, he had left a legacy behind. And this was the last words of Joshua. He said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. He made up his mind to serve God because he knew that in serving God in totality, there is safety. And the Malachi said, he will spare them as he who spared his son that served him. So when you serve God, in the way God approves, God will spare you. Amen. And as I raise my prayer, Bible says, wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. Whether you serve God or you do not serve him, this kingdom, it cannot be moved. Whether Satan likes it or not, he said, I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail. Whatever Satan does, whether he turns men to women, amen. amen, whatever he does, he can't change this kingdom. It's a kingdom that cannot be moved. Nebuchadnezzar tried. He threw men into the fire. The men were bold to say, oh, king, we are not careful to obey you in this matter. For we bow to one God and one God alone. If the God whom we bow to do not defend us, so be it. And in the furnace of fire, the fourth man showed up because they vowed to serve this God and to stand with him. So nothing. Men have tried to extinguish the service of this kingdom, but they are too small. Our father, apostle, was saying, once a point time, there was a governor. He wanted to stop Christianity. He wanted to bring out a mother in his state. But what's the statement? It is hard for you to kick against barbed wire. Amen. That same man, you see, he, 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 that same man have done havoc to, to many. And the tears that have ascended onto heaven because of this same man. Is, when, I, when, I, when his name comes to my mind, the person in the Bible that I think about is that judge in Luke, Luke 18. He said, this judge, neither fear God nor regard man. But this woman, she kept on persisting. And because the judge do not fear God, neither regarded man, because of the continuous weariness of the widow, the judge have to bow. But this same man we talk about, he refused to bow. Even after the election, he was speaking to his religious clerics how they will extinguish Christianity in Nigeria. He didn't know that he was dealing with a kingdom which cannot be moved. He didn't know until shame and judgment have become his lot and portion. And that's the beginning. He will be alive to see that this kingdom cannot be moved. Amen. Amen. His name was rejected as a minister. That's the beginning. We serve a God that is alive. He might give you long rope that you will repent. But if we fear our God is weak, he's not weak. A thousand years with the Lord is like one day. And when you look, you are too small to make God stand. You are too small. You can't kick against the barbed wire. Help me tell that short devil. You can't kick against the barbed wire. 
Nigeria is for God. Thank God we receive a testimony and encouragement in the morning. This nation will serve God in honor, in righteousness, and in glory. And, aclo- and, and across the globe, Nigeria will be known. Men will come to Nigerians and say, I want to follow you. I want to follow your God. Because we have received a kingdom which cannot be moved. No devil from the pit of hell can do that. Amen. Amen. Say, wherefore we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace. And I believe the Lord through his servant, our father, the Lord, our apostle, our Mosai, have summoned us that we should receive grace. Amen. Grace whereby we may serve God. And that our service should not be haphazard. Our service should not be such that on the last day, he will say, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. But you have some of us who receive grace, whereby we will serve God acceptably with reverence and with godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. What the prayer say, Lord, help me. As we journey upon this mountain, let me not go back naked. Grace. You know, there's a spirit called the spirit of the fear of the Lord. That was what was at work in the life of Joseph. That was what was at, was at work in the life of Daniel. Daniel was captured, 13 years old boy. The Bible says he proposed in his heart and will not defy himself. He said, let us therefore have grace where we can serve God acceptably. I want to say, oh God, put grace upon my life. Put grace upon my life. I receive grace to serve you. To serve you to the end. I receive grace to serve you to the end. Help me, Lord Jesus. I, I realize that we refuse to respond to that prayer call. seeing that we have received a kingdom that cannot be moved. Kings will rise, kingdoms will fall. Even the names of deities will be forgotten. In the vast islands of time, heroes will not be remembered. The chief of your village, he will not be known. Even the governor of your state. But there is a throne that is so high, reaches to the four ends of eternity. The reason why eternity is significant is because of that throne. He doesn't need heaven to survive, but heaven needs him to survive. Can we ask for grace? Let us have grace whereby we may serve him acceptably in reverence and in godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Let us have grace. Let us have grace. Let us have grace. Let us have grace. For our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. We seek grace from you tonight. Grace to walk the length of the journey that you have called us. Grace, grace. We seek grace. We seek grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste hallowing wilderness. He led him about, instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye, as an eagle stirred up her nest 
flutter it over her young, spread it abroad her wings, take at them, bear at them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. There was no strange God. In the civilization that God was training Israel to embrace, there was no strange God with him. Let us pray. And so, God, we come to you as ministers that labor in your vineyard, that our eyes might be open today to see all the gods wrestling for space in our soul, that you will give us the courage, the courage to throw down and to desecrate every altar that has been raised in the privacy of our soul that competes with your presence within us. Do a surgery in the life of everyone seated here and those participating online and yet those that will listen to your counsel through the systems that we have put in place in the days to come. By all means, cause us to dance to the beat of your drum and to pledge allegiance to your flag. In Jesus' mighty name. So please, let's welcome to the microphone. Do you have your... Okay, you are equipped already. An elder in the labor of the gospel, Pierre Yancock. See, let me tell you something. In my teaching on idolatry, I tell people, this also is part of it. If you clap louder for any other thing in this world than you clap for Jesus. And I tell my Cameroonian brothers, you know, we love soccer like Nigeria. And when Cameroon and Nigeria meet, it's fire on the... But you know when our nation score, they shout in Lagos and we hear you in Yaoundé. For just a soccer goal, something that we celebrate for one day. And I never understood why when we tell people to clap for Jesus in church. They, can we? And our shouts are not just emotional. It's not just that we are excited or we are of sanguine temperament. It's our allegiance to the master. In his presence, nothing else matters. Our titles, our positions, our ranks, our epaulets. Hey, come on, somebody make a noise. Give the Lord a shout. Yeah. the young to the old, from the women to the men, from the boys to the girls, from the small to the great. Let's give the Lord a shout! Hallelujah! 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 Can we do that song again? So I cherish Be your heart get
our eternal King. And we forever will be grateful that you found us and saved us and called us by your name. Made us who were not the people, your people. You sanctified us and you found us worthy to represent you on this earth. What an honor that we are standing in your shoes to reveal your counsel to your people. I pray that tonight your majesty be exalted in the midst of us. That every eye will see and every ear will hear. I pray that as your word goes forth tonight you will heal the sick. You will deliver the captives. You will cleanse the lepers. That devils be cast out. That the lepers be cleansed. And the name of the Lord be glorified. Receive all our glory, all our praises and our glory. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Before I go to the message, uh, I continue the sharing that we started this morning. I want to invite Joseph Lagrand to come and give us a, just a worship song. I hope that's okay by you. The presence of the Lord is already in our midst, hallelujah. And I thank God for the privilege to stand before you. Please, can we just rise to our feet for a few more minutes? Let's worship the Lamb upon the throne. Hallelujah. Can you just begin to worship him in spirit? The Bible says he is the one who walks in the midst of the candlesticks. He has seven horns and seven eyes. Apostle John says that I saw a lamb that was slain, but that was standing tall. Jesus is our lamb, slain but standing tall on the cross. Can you just go ahead and behold him tonight? <speaking in Spanish> Bashataya Makanda Nana Mashata for you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. Oh! 
before you. We hail you, Jesus. Let the people that you have redeemed hail you tonight. King of glory, monarch of Zion. Oh, you are the Lord. We call you the Lord upon the throne. Again, I want to salute Apostle Arume and the First Lady. Thank you for having us here. And thank you for giving us the opportunity to share, to serve this wonderful people of God. You know, the message we preach is not popular. It doesn't sell on the church market. But it is the message of the kingdom. I've been invited to conferences where they took the microphone from me. Seriously. Not far, as far back as last week. I started preaching. 30 minutes into my preaching, they stopped the message. They said, no, this is not what we want to hear. That's how far we have gone in our backsteadedness been to conferences where they cut my sound. I was preaching and they cut the sound. And while I was asking why, the protocol officer came and said, the host of the conference says, it's enough. So I'm happy to find people that are hungry for the living God. I was telling Apostle Arume on the other day when we came, I said, I feel that here I don't have to look for words. I will say it the way it comes. Everywhere I preach, you know, some things you want to say and you say, should I say it here if I say it? But you know, whether you get offended or not, <laughs> it's part of it, you know. Some, some days some people must leave church angry. Jesus will preach and his own disciples will say, this word is hard. Who else will be saved? I mean, the people that were walking with him, they will say, this word is hard. Who else? Who can be saved? We are not called as, as ministers to sugarcoat it, to paint it, to make it sound good. You know, what has happened in the past years, we've added sugar to the, to the living water and added color so it can please the people. You know, because there's something, when we separated this morning, I was telling you, the last question Jesus asked me when I was in heaven, the first time. I want to start from there and then go to 
He asked me, Nyangok, what is this craving desire in your heart and in the heart of your fellow ministers to want to see your churches and your ministries grow by all means? Do you want this growth for you or you want it for me? See, that question from his mouth opened volumes. I can teach on that for one year. You know, you can want this thing to grow because the bigger it is, of course, the bigger the man of God, no? And the bigger it is, the bigger the offering basket and the tight basket and the reputation of the man of God. We can want to do this thing and forcefully advance the cause of the gospel, but not for him, but for us. See, I want, to let, I want you to let the Holy Spirit circumcise your motives. I told you in the morning, if you want to please the master, there shouldn't be any room for ambitions in your life. Apostle, you see, Joseph in Egypt became prime minister of Egypt. And we want, you know, when we preach about Joseph, People get to dream of getting, becoming like him. But do you know that Joseph had no ambition at all? As a person, Joseph had no ambition. Joseph wasn't planning to rule Egypt. It was not part of his agenda. All of his life, go back and study your Bible. All of his life, Joseph only wanted to please God. The reason he was in jail was because he wanted to please God. He refused to sleep with Potiphar's wife. Because he said, how will I hurt or sin against my God by doing such an ugly thing? And he knew very well the consequences. He knew that if Mrs. Potiphar shouted, all oh, rapist, he will be jailed and he will be sentenced to death. But in his drive to please God, he said, I would rather die in jail with a rapist etiquette on my back than to displeased this God. So becoming prime minister was not part of the agenda. In fact, when he prophesied to the king's cup bearer and the king's cup bearer was restored to the palace, this is Joseph's plea. He said, I am a Hebrew boy. I don't even know how I managed to find myself in Egypt. If you want to know, if there's one desire in my heart, I don't know if my father is still alive or not. If someday I can see him before he dies, I will be the happiest boy. That was Joseph's request. So becoming prime minister was not an, a, a, an ambition. It was in, see, you have, God doesn't work with living people. He only works with the dead. Until he has killed you, you can serve his purposes. You know, it is said in scriptures that nobody can see God and live, right? It doesn't mean the day you see him, you go to the graveyard. That's not what it means. What it means is that the day you see him, everything that is human and fleshly in you dies. He kills you. He, he anesthetizes your system so that you become, to him, you become a eunuch. You know, a eunuch is a man who stays with a woman and he doesn't have any desire. Until he has made you a eunuch, you can't serve his eternal purposes. You get to the place where his desires become your desires and his will, your will. Until you get there, you, are not, you've, you haven't started a journey. So when we look at the, the body of Christ today, there is a lot of ambition. And we use all the talents and gifts and gimmicks and everything that we have to advance this cause. You will be shocked on the last day how many people will not make it. So Jesus told me if the trumpet of the rapture was to sound today, only a tiny minority. And I began to cry. I cried so much that day. You know, when he was talking to me, I was reminded of a friend of mine. A year before that encounter that I had, 
had had a visitation. Jesus had appeared to his room, or he, he, had, he had seen a vision. And in this vision, the Lord had shown him the end of the world, the end times. How the Lord had gathered all the inhabitants of the earth on one side, and the kingdom of heaven on the other side, and in between a very deep gulf. And on this gulf, a tiny bridge under which was the lake of fire. And he says in the vision, the Lord was making a roll call. And when you heard your name, you, you will come to the bridge, like standing on the edge of the bridge, just standing. And then the Lord will begin to tell you the story of your life. And as he told the story, the bridge will move you. You will not walk to the one on the bridge, no, you stand. And the bridge is moving you to the other side. And if the Lord finished talking before you cross over, the bridge will open. And then you will fall in the lake of fire. And he said to me, of the first 1,000 people that were called before him, only two made it. The rest of them fell in the fire. Both pastors and church members alike. And he was 1,001 person in that vision. And when his turn came, he came on the bridge. And the Lord began to tell him, you are a prophet. You've traveled the world, planted churches, done crusades. You've done this and you've done that. And he was answering, yes, Lord. And yes, Lord. And yes, Lord. And he was moving. And he says he was like two steps away from crossing when suddenly the music changed and the Lord said, unfortunately. You were doing all this for yourself and never for me. And the, the, Lord, the bridge opened and then he fell in the lake of fire and then he came out of the vision. And when he came out of the vision, the Lord began to talk to him and say, I've assessed you, both your life and your ministry, and I found you wanting. And the Lord said, I appeared to you in this vision to give you a second chance to amend both your life and your ministry because you are not ready. You think you are ready, but you are not. So now he's telling us the story. I was with my wife on a Sunday morning. We were preparing. It was January 2014 when he told us the story. Just barely after New Year. You know, it was his retreat, end of year retreat. So he's telling me the story. He's telling us the story. And he's crying. Crying on the phone and saying, my brother Pierre, let's, let's begin to prepare the church for the coming of the Lord. Jesus is at the, at the door. And I tell you, if the Lord Jesus came today, less than 2% of the believers on the earth will be saved. You know, we were all gripped with fear hearing him give the testimony. Somewhere at the back of my mind, I thought, well, I agree that, I mean, the experience is genuine. I can tell, I have the witness of the Holy Spirit, the experience he had is a genuine one. But I, one thing that I didn't agree with was the less than 2%, he said. It sounded like too little for me. I said 2%. I mean, if he had even said 20 or 10, I would accept. I mean, looking at the church growth and whatever I said in the morning, all this mega, mega, whatever you see everywhere. You know, when I, had my, when I went to heaven, when I had this first encounter and Jesus took me to heaven, oh, my brothers, I can tell you today with the facts, biblical facts, that the two person he said he was kind. I will show you in the Bible. See, when we're talking about eternity and we're talking about walking with God, we're not talking about one of those topics. It's not one of those things. See, this thing is the only thing that cost the life of the only son of God. Jesus didn't die on the cross so you can marry, so you can get an American visa and go live in white, white man country. No. See, when I had this encounter and I came back, I told my wife, you remember the, minus, the less than 2% that brother said? He was very kind. He's very generous. He's not going to be up to that. And she told me, no, my husband, you're making this thing too difficult. I said, it's not me. But before I go to the facts, listen to this. The gate to, it, to heaven has always been narrow. Not, it's, it's, our new, it's the modern Babylonian preachers that tried, made it broad in our minds. Made us, gave us the impression that Jesus is so lonely in heaven, he's looking for just anything to come in. See, he is not trying to populate heaven by all means. 
He said, it's written in your Bible, that if your right eye is going to be a problem for you getting to heaven, do what? Plug it and throw it in the fire. It's better for you to enter heaven one eye than to have the two and go to the lake of fire. Is it written like that in your Bibles? Yes, he said, if your hand is going to be a stumbling block, cut it yourself. He didn't say, go see the doctor so they can apply some anesthesia. He said, cut it. That's the kind of violence you need to walk with him. I told you in the morning, he is such a jealous God. He will not tolerate any other presence. The moment he smells another aroma around you, you are alone. He is gone. For the sake of the minister's conference, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17, Paul said, please give me that scripture. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Listen to this. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. The man writing this, is a professor. He is a very learned man. But he says in his calling, Jesus did not send him to baptize. He said Jesus sent him to preach the gospel, the reconciliation of the world to God. And this without the wisdom of words. See, if, you, if it was Apostle Nyangok that wrote this, you would say, it's because I'm not a doctor. It's because I'm not a lecturer. Maybe because I didn't go to... to big school. But this one was a graduate. So when he's talking about wisdom of words, he knows how to turn the language. He can speak the Hebrew and the Greek. He can speak all the Aramean. He has all the, he has all the vocabulary and the grammar. He says, Jesus said, let the cross of Christ be made of non effect. In other words, if in your dispense or in your preaching of the gospel, the people listening to you can smell the aroma of your PhD or they can smell the aroma of your grades and your position and your rankings. If they can smell your connection with the kings and the governors, you know, all these things that ministers boast about. If anybody can smell that, if in your preaching they smell nothing else but Christ, you have removed the cross of Christ. You have made the cross of none effect. You know, I like the example you gave yesterday, how this minister came looking angry, turning around the pulpit and saying, the shoes I wear. What have shoes to do with the salvation of the souls of the people? Whether your shoes are two million pounds or two million dollars, who cares? But you see, those are the things we clap for. We celebrate them. They make the cross of Christ. Because they remove the eyes from the objective. The objective is not me. You know, when I was in heaven, apostle, I asked Jesus. No, he said, I am angry with you, the pastors. And I said, why? And he said, because when you preach, you talk more about you than you talk about me. And your people see you and they know you more than they know me. You are supposed to announce me, not you. And he said, and you and some of your friends, when you talk to the people, you talk to them about your shoes, your shirt, your dress, your money, your car, your connection, your traveling, how you, you no more travel economic, now you travel business class. What has that to do with the gospel? He has nothing. He has no clue. He said, no, none of you will ever be greater than me in this service of the, of the kingdom. Yet, throughout Jesus' life, there was no mention about his clothing, no mention about his house. In fact, some of us think that Jesus was a, a street boy. He had no house because he said, ravens, you know, foxes have holes and, and whatever not. No? So when he said that, believers think that Jesus didn't have a house, like he was going from place to place trying to sleep under trees. No. You know, he was sumptuously dressed. We only know that when we saw the Roman soldiers grumble over his clothes. But throughout his ministry, there was never a mention on his possession or whatsoever. And I asked him why. And he said, it wasn't part of the message. His, my, he said to me, my effort throughout my earthly ministry was to see men, cause men to see him. 
And whenever they wanted to applaud or clap for him, he would disappear. True? Today we tell the congregation, say amen, then I will go further. Like if you don't say the loudest amen, I will not release the next revelation. And people will. They are clapping for who? Shouting for who? It's all flesh. And I tell you the truth. You can ask Jesus when you see him. In all these circles that you see in our churches, he is not there. So, let's come back. See? I told you that the two percent my friend said he was very kind because the figures are not up to that the real figures are not up to that in the book of exodus moses brought out about three million people from egypt taking them to the promised land how many of you got to the destination how many two so Take your calculators and let's do the math. If you have a classroom of 3 million people and only two pass the exam, what percentage is that? Come on. We're talking about 0. 0.0000. So we are very far from 2%. They asked Jesus in Matthew 25, what would be the sign of your second coming? And he said, it shall be as in the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, people were busy getting married, marrying, giving to marriage, eating and drinking and making merry. Am I right? Yes, sir. Now, in the days of Noah, how many people were saved in the ark? Eight people. Now, how many millions or billions of people were there on the earth in the days of Noah? Nobody knows. Well, Bible didn't tell us this. But just imagine that those in the days of Noah, it was just Makodi. That the whole earth in that time was just like the city of Makodi. How many people, how many inhabitants do we have here? Nine millions. Now, out of the nine million, if God only saved eight, please take your calculators and let do the, let's do the math. You are still talking about 0.0000. Do you now understand why Paul said to walk at your salvation with fear and trembling? The figures are not what you have in your mind. See, Jesus gave the parable. He said, the kingdom of God shall be likened to a king that organized a great party and sent invitation cards to his friends, the governors, the senators, the ministers, the general overseers, and all of them gave him excuses why they couldn't come for the party, Right? They said, well, this one said, I'm busy with this meeting. And all of them gave genuine excuses. But when the, the king received the, all of the excuses, he said to his servants, go to the streets and compel anyone that you see to come in. And they went out and compelled people that were not ready for the feast. They were not coming for the feast. They were passing by, passerbys. They got them, brought them in. But when the master of the ceremony came, when the king came into the party hall, the Bible says he went around the tables. He had to check all the guests that were installed before the party could begin. And then he found a man that was not properly dressed. Hey, these people were not coming for the party. They were passing. Some of them were coming from their farms and markets and whatever not. And he saw one. He said, how did you come in with this one? Then what did he say? Huh? Then said the king to the servant, bind him, hand and foot, and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So even if the angels are distracted and you manage to enter, <laughs> that's what he's saying. On the last day, even if by adventure, the angels didn't watch and then you sneak in. The master is going to go around the tables. That's how serious this matter is. He's going to fetch out everybody that is not properly dressed.
See? It's because we have stopped reading the Bible. We listen to motivational speaking. You know, they try to convince us that God is so good. He can't do this. Hey, are you, are you kidding me? Apostle. <laughs> Jesus said, narrow is the gate and straight is the path that leads to eternal life and very few be there that find it. See, there are two things attached to this statement. First, you have to find the path and secondly, engage on the path. Very few are there that find the path. Not talking about walking on it, just finding it. Very few. One day, a, a, a rich young ruler found the path and he came to Jesus. Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Can I help you today? You are ministers. Let me tell you this. Jesus didn't tell him. You see, salvation. Eh? Now, I'm making the connection with idolatry that Jesus told me. It's, salvation is not a generic product that is served to everyone that comes. Good master, what must I do to, to have eternal life? Jesus said, you know the commandments. Do not steal. Do not commit adultery. Honor your father and mother. He said, I've done this from my youth. And the Bible said, Jesus looked at him and loved him. I said, you have done all things, but it's remaining just one. And the one thing that is remaining is not confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. Because that's a generic term we know. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you are saved. Jesus didn't tell him, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Jesus said, go. <laughs> Do what? Sell all your goods. Do what? Distribute the proceedings to the poor and come follow me. And the Bible says, and he walked away so sad. Why? Because he was very rich. Now, do you know that Jesus had met many other rich people before in the gospel and he didn't ask them to go sell all of their proceedings and give to the poor? So why did Jesus ask this particular guy to do that when he met Zacchaeus and he didn't ask him? Have you ever pondered over that? Because the, the thing that stops salvation from flowing in your life are the idols that you entertain. This guy wanted eternal life, but he had a God that was ruling his life. So Jesus said, take out that God so I can come in. And the man said, I want you, but I don't want to part with my God. Jesus said, no, you can't have the two. See, the presence of Jesus in your life doesn't, is not automatic, doesn't imply automatic salvation. He came to Zacchaeus' house and sat there at lunch with Zacchaeus, ate and drank and was happy. Jesus made no statement. Then towards the end of the meal, Zacchaeus stood up and said, Lord, I'm giving half of my wealth to the poor. And if I defrauded anyone, I'm going to return four times what I took. Listen to Jesus' comment. He says, now, what has come into this? Until now, salvation had not yet come in. Why? Because there was a God blocking the entrance of salvation. Zacchaeus, when Zacchaeus moved that idol called money, you know, Apostle asked the question this morning when he was concluding the session. What is the name of your God? Many of you are in the gospel, but your God is money. Your God is your belly. Your God is the fame you want to achieve. Paul said, be ye imitators of me as beloved brethren. Philippians chapter 3 verse 17. Can I have the scripture, Philippians 3? Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk as ye have for an, us for an example. Be followers of people that walk in the same example you have seen in us. 
It means you must not follow all the examples you see out there. Even though some of them are shakers and movers in our nations, they are not examples to be followed. Paul said, follow them that walk in the same light, in the same example that you see us follow. Verse 18. For many walk, and he's talking about the ministers of God. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Many apostles and bishops and senior superintendents and whatever not, general overseers, are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Verse 19, whose end is destruction or perdition? Whose God is their belly? Have you seen the place of buying and selling in our churches today? How much money, how money has been exalted? Everything is centered around how much money we make. Whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame? Who mind everything? The gospel today is only about things. Very few of us are pointing the church to Christ. We point them to the things that we get. How they will be blessed. How they will prosper. How they will marry. How they will get visa to go abroad. How their business will skyrocket. How they will become the biggest tycoons the business tycoon in Nigeria and in Cameroon and wherever not. And they come to church to shout amen to sow seed for that. They come to invest in the, in the God that's... Apostle, do you know why people don't give their money to God? When people are genuinely saved and the only God they serve is Yahweh, they have no retinue when it comes to giving their money. You know why you struggle to give your money to God? No man can serve two masters at the same time. You either love one and hate and hate and hate the other. He will honor one and despise the other. You can't serve at the same time, both God and Mammon. Can we talk about that a little bit this evening? Yes, you have time for me? Yes, so when we were leaving, we were partying this morning, I told you three things, three aspects of your life that you need to consider. With relations to idolatry. Don't forget this scripture I just quoted. No man can serve two masters at the same time. You either love one and hate the words are, are chosen carefully. Love one and hate. So, apostle, many of our churches are filled with haters of God. They love themselves and they hate God. They love themselves and they hate our God. It's not me saying it. I'm not preaching. I'm just reading the scripture. That's what the scripture says. You either love one and hate the other or honor one and despise the other. Isaiah prophesied and said, these people, it's true. These people honor me with their lips. But what? Hard. So this evening, I want to take a time and take you through an x-ray or a scan machine. So when you are leaving this, see, it's not about, Paul said, uh, James said, eh, be doers of the word and not just hearers only, deceiving yourselves by foolish reasonings. You know there's a de deception in the body of Christ. You know that you are not living right. You know that you are into all kinds of rubbish, but somehow you have succeeded to convince yourself that in spite of your wrong and bad living, you are still on your way to heaven. That's a deception James is talking about. You know you are into adultery, into fornication, into lie telling. You live, I mean, you live like a devil, and you know it. But you have convinced your conscience, and it doesn't. Your conscience doesn't accuse you anymore. You have succeeded to convince yourself that 
you are still a child of God, that you are on your way to heaven, and that if the trumpet will sound today, you will be taken. So, three aspects. I told you in the morning, look at your money, look at how you manage your time, and how you manage the gifts and talents you have. Amen? I want us to narrow on that. Because if I leave this place without showing you idolatry properly explained, like the, let the Bible speak to you, you may go here with another, with a, you know, it's the same deception in the air. I want to read two scriptures and then we'll talk briefly and pray. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 5, and Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. The two scriptures say the same thing. Ephesians 3 says, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy prophet. No, not this Ephesians 3. Ephesians 5, verse 5. 5, 5. And Colossians 3, 5. For this ye know, that no warmonger, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater, had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So no adulterer, no fornicator, no covetous man. And when Paul gets to covetousness, he narrows his, he comes down to explain what covetousness is. A covetous man who is an idolater. So in Paul's terms to the efficient church, covetousness or greed is an idolatry. So what is covetousness? The desire to possess. Am I right? Covetousness is the envy. When you see your neighbors, see the commandments of God have not been canceled. Thou shalt not covet. Still in force till today. So that you don't tell us that we are not under the law. See, covetousness is idolatry. So if you see your, see, some of you maybe you came, you passed through that school. Some years back, our pastors began to teach us that if you are walking on the street and you see a beautiful car that you like, you lay your hands on the car and you claim. You know what they were teaching us? So we went about lambanoing people's cars and people's houses. I claim. We even saw people with a suit, your nice suit, you just hold his suit and say, a lambano, I possess. <laughs> the, the biblical language for it is, and it is what? Idolatry. Idolatry. This is minister's conference. I'm, I will come to where you are. You want me to come where you are? <laughs> I'm afraid to look for trouble. I may look for trouble <laughs> because I, I am already in trouble. <laughs> so Paul said, Idol covetousness, a covetous man who is an idolater had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5, because the Bible says in the mouth of two witnesses, a matter is established. Mortify therefore your members. No, Colossians 3. Let's read from verse 1, okay? Please, let's read from verse 1 so you are in the context. If ye then be risen with Christ, <laughs> seek those things which are... So I want you to go back to your prayer, prayer list and check those things that you are seeking in prayer every day. If there are no things above... It means you are not risen with Christ. For you to rise with Christ, you must first die. Because the living don't need resurrection. It is the dead. That... So go back to your prayer book. If you have a prayer journal, go look at your prayer list, your prayer request. See, I've been telling the church lately, if the things you pray about or you talk to God about can be found in a supermarket or in a shop or in a bank around. It's not prayer. <laughs> a 
It is not. It is what? Man of God, do you know he forbade us to pray about things like what we drink, what we eat? He said, do not be concerned. For those things, your heavenly father that knows that you have need of them. It is only the pagans of the world that worry about such. So if they are mentioned in your prayers, who are you? Come on, talk to me. Pagan of what? Pagan of the world. Luke chapter 12. It's Luke 12. So, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. So, please stop a moment because the camera... The scan camera is looking into your heart. What are those things that you, are set, you set your affection on? Because we want to screen the affections of your heart. My attention, my affection, be yours. Be yours forevermore. My devotion. And what? My surrender. My devotion. Be yours. Be yours forevermore. No? So what are the attentions and the affections of your heart? If you are still comparing yourself with yourselves, you are still here. You haven't moved. See, if there's an ounce of competition in your heart, like, see, me, I started ministry 12 years ago, and this one just started two years, and his church is now, you know, and then you go around looking. You know, even some of your, <laughs> your quest for anointing. Your quest for power. Has to be checked, properly checked. I was in the city of Pojanti in Gabon. I was praying, going to teach the pastor's conference. And the Lord said to me, in a clear, I mean like I heard his voice like, loud in a loudspeaker. He said, when you go today, tell my people to stop seeking anointing and power. Tell them to seek me. There is something very dicey in that what I'm saying, but the law will give you understanding. You will know. See, it's cut. You have, it's like a, the, the, the knife of the, 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 the surgeon. He has to cut just by the nerves, not touching the nerves. You cut his, you know. What is this quest for anointing and power? What is sponsoring that desire in your heart? He said, tell them not to seek power and anointing. Tell them to seek me. When they find me, when it's time for anointing, I will manifest it. And when it's time for power, I will show it. Hmm? Yeah, it's Simon the Magician, Acts chapter 8. A lot of Simons in our churches, they go looking for mantles, they go sowing seed for anointing, for grace. They celebrate grace more than God. But it's a rotten desire. Oh, come back. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall he also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is... So, covetousness and greed are the twin brothers of selfishness, self-centeredness, stinginess, 
It's all about me, what I get. So I want us to look at those two scriptures and lie with idolatry. Jesus told them, I know you are not following me for the words that I speak. See, all of us ministers, me included, before I went to heaven, we all wanted to have power so we can pull the whole city to Christ, right? Can I make it simple for us? Do you know Jesus repented? Apostle Gideon mentioned the scripture in the morning. Luke chapter, see Matthew 11. Jesus began to repent over the cities in which he had made, he had performed his greatest miracles. He began to reproach the cities because they had not repented. They had seen all the miracles, but they had not repented. Woe unto you, Chorazin, and woe unto you, Bethsaida. So, it brings us back to the place where what do you, do you just want anointing so you can be famous? See, the people will see all the miracles but they will not repent because miracles in themselves have no power to make people change their hearts. If not, the church in the wilderness that Moses was pastoring would have been the most spiritual church. What have they not seen? They have seen all kinds of miracles. From the one he performed in, in Egypt, plus the one that he performed in the wilderness. They saw manna fall. They saw meat come from heaven. He turned bitter water into sweet water. What did Moses not do? They had a pastor who was seeing God face to face. The only one that was talking to God mouth with mouth. Yet they didn't believe nothing of everything he said until they all died in the wilderness. Did you hear Jesus say that of all the prophets that were born of a woman, John the Baptist was the greatest? Huh? Yet he never performed no miracle. He never raised a 20,000 man congregation. John the Baptist, I mean, when Jesus is calling John the Baptist the greatest of all prophets, I want to ask Jesus, what is your definition of... <laughs> What is Jesus' definition of a prophet? So if you go read that text, a prophet in Jesus' economy is not one who gives word of knowledge to people in the congregations. Because John never did. But he's the greatest. He even told Abimelech that the woman you are trying to mess up with is a wife of my prophet. Talking about Abraham. True? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is Abraham. What? Do you have a reference where Abraham ever gave a prophecy? Say, so last night I had a dream, and in the dream the Lord appeared to me and said, there's no reference like that in the Bible. So, let's come back. Three, three aspects. Number one, your money. When we mention the issue of money in church, suddenly your nerves get hot. See, if we call money... And it makes you nervous. It's a sign. We don't need to continue the x-ray. It's already a, a symptom that you have a problem. <laughs> talk about everybody, everything, but don't talk about my money. Because it is my money. Now, and we are not about to collect an offering here. Oh, you come. So you think I'm preparing you for seed sowing? No. <laughs> oh man, I wish I had more time in this process. I would, I would tell you something. See, I'm still on my first visit to heaven. Tomorrow, tomorrow if we have time, maybe I'll talk about it, the second or the third. And then my, I'll be done for this time. But still a lot. See, this stomach is not fufu and arrow. <laughs> it is revelation and things that I... <laughs> I tell them in church every Sunday, I say, you see, my stomach is not food. Half of it are the things that Jesus said I should tell you that I haven't told you yet. <laughs> and the other half 
as your sins that I'm keeping because when you confess them, the pastor has to keep them so they make my stomach big. <laughs> Some of your stories and your confessions, I will die with them so I can't digest them. I can't take them today. <laughs> so let's talk about money. I told you in the morning, check your money. How do you manage your money? Number one, who takes the first share of your money? See, when we talk about tithe, and Satan doesn't want us to talk about tithe these days because they say tithe is Old Testament, tithe is law, tithe is this and tithe. The reason Satan is sponsoring that doctrine is because he wants mammon to remain the God that is ruling your lives. Do you do tithe here? Okay. Almost everywhere now they say, don't preach about tithe, it's Old Testament. It's, it's because you have no knowledge of the scriptures. Because this tithe thing began way back before the, new before the law. See, Abraham was the first to pay tithe. Abraham never lived under the law. Are you here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When he met Melchizedek, hey, apostle, who told Abraham to give up Melchizedek the tithe? Now, see, this Abraham was worshipping idols in, Ur, uh, in, the, in, the, oh, in Chaldean, right? And then he met God and he began to walk with God. So, it's either he learned this tithing principle from the, God, the gods of the Chaldeans, or it is a living God that taught him. So Abraham met Melchizedek and Melchizedek didn't ask him for tithe. He, was, he decided... It was a prompting in his heart. And he paid tithe. Am I right? Now Isaac, throughout the life of Isaac, no mention about tithe. And then one morning, Jacob sees a ladder that is going up in heaven with angels going up and down. And then he makes a vow. He said, if you will keep me and bless me, I will return to this place and pay the tithe. Jacob, who taught you tithe? We are hundreds of years before Moses. Before the law. It was a family practice. God taught them. Are you with me? Oh, yes, <clears throat> Look at this. The first church was, plant, was ever planted in the Garden of Eden. The members of the church were Adam and Eve. And the pastor was God himself. And the Bible says every day in the cool of the day, God will leave everything that he was doing. He will come down to have fellowship with them. Now, the question is, what was the discourse? When God will come and they will fellowship, why would God tell them? What was God telling them? We have no idea what the discussion, what, what the sermons were about. We don't know, right? All we know is that someday, Adam and Eve had children, and then at a certain period of the year, they knew by their customs that they had to go and present sacrifices to God. And God accepted the offering of, of Abel and rejected that of where did they get that? They learned it from their fathers. We know that it was part of the discourse that their fathers had with God when he came to fellowship with them. No? God rejected Cain's offering not because he was Kokoyam and Cassava. Because some people say he was a farmer, he, yeah, he brought cocoa yam, there was no blood. He has nothing to do with blood. He has something to do with God taking first place. Abel brought the first fruits, the firstlings, and the fat from his flock. See, in your management of your money, let's call it your money, if God doesn't take first place, he has no interest. So your tithe is not just the tenth of your income. The tithe should be the first tenth. Meaning when money comes into your hand, the first thing you must do is to remember him. If you mix him with your, your bills, you pay your landlord and you pay your, uh, your utility bills and you remember God, he didn't take first place. He's not honored. You have just dishonored him. So, let's make it simple. Consider your, your money. When you have taken out all the bills that you have to pay as a father of a home, the money that is left for you to use for pleasure and leisure, how much of it is given to God and how much of it is given to yourself? 
When you go and calculate how much of your money you give to God and how much you spend on yourself and on your whatever not, it tells you exactly where your heart is. You know, one day, I'm praying in my room. And then the Lord just dropped a word in my heart and I called my son, the follower of Lagrand. I called him, Shiloh, come, come, come. And I said, Shiloh, do you know that you are on your way to hell? <laughs> and he looked at me with big, uh, Daddy, where are you coming? I said, yes. The Lord just said, spoke to me as I was praying. I said, sit down. He sat down. I said, okay, every day, you, you manage to find money <clears throat> at least 200 francs to put internet in your phone so you can do WhatsApp and Facebook, right? He said, yes. And I said, you do that seven days a week. 200 times seven, that's 1,400. So I said, so how much is your offering to God every week? He said, well, daddy, sometimes I give 500. And when I don't have 500, I can give two, 300. So I say, you have the discipline to give MTN 1,400 every week. See? So you give more of your money to MTN than you give to God. So your heart is where? So I ask him, is MTN your uncle or your auntie? He said, Daddy, I never saw it like this. I said, the Bible says where your heart is. That's where your money will go. See, I see how disciplined you are to make... You always have to want to have data in your phone so you can do WhatsApp and Facebook and whatever not. But when it comes to giving to God, you don't have the same discipline. Your allegiance is more to MTN than to God. He began to cry. I said, yes. Cry, oh, because somebody said, they cry, you will cry when the sins are gone. Cry it now when the sins are still. I said, you better cry, my son. Cry and repent and change. So I want you to look at your money. How much, how much of your money is wasted on you? On your pleasures? On your looking, you want to look good, you want to appear five star. And it's nothing bad about that. Just that when you make the ratio between you, how much you invest on you, and how much you give to God. You don't need a prophet to come from Sudan and tell you that you are not doing right. Hello? You know, the ladies on Saturday, they will go to the saloon and pay, I don't know how much Naira in Cameroon, like 10,000 Sifa. So they can wash their hair and turn it left and right and make it look good. And they're doing that because they want to come and worship God on Sunday. They pay 10,000 Sifa at the saloon. And then when they come to worship God, they give him 1,000. So you honor your hair and your hairdresser more than you honor God. And you're not giving 1,000 to God and the offering basket because you don't have money. The money is in your bag. Just that there's another divinity in you that tells you that when you give that, it's a waste. That's why when this woman broke her alabaster box on Jesus' feet, the elder said, what a waste. When it is poured on us so we can smell good, it's not a waste. But when it's poured on the master's feet, it's a waste. You will love one and hate. That's a word, hate. So most of us here are haters of God. What we drop in the offering basket is an insult to the sanctity of God. See, apostle, God is my witness. I hear that some of the... When I came back from heaven, we stopped collecting offering in my church. I said, no, no more offering. Just keep your money. Because he told me, 80 to 90% of what we drop in the offering basket doesn't get to him. He doesn't take it. It's not acceptable. Have you ever been, have you ever been given something and you felt belittled and insulted by the gift? Huh? Now imagine me, Apostle Nyangok is celebrating his birthday. Then Mama Dina sends me a packet of biscuits. It will either be a prophetic action or an insult. True? If I see a, a person from Mama Dina, they say, all the way from Makodi, Mama Dina Osai sends you a gift. And I open the gift, and it's a packet of biscuits. 
Okay, I'll say, is it that she made a mistake? She was trying to pass her something else. And, or they took the gift of, that was meant for a child, and they sent it to me. And then I would take my phone and say, Mama, I saw your gift. Is, is it the packet of biscuits you were trying to send to me? And if she says yes, then I will ask, was it a prophetic action? Is, is that something God is saying that I'm not hearing? Or you really... And if, if she really says that she wanted to give me a, the biscuits as a gift, as a birthday gift, then that is a grievous insult. And we do that with God every day. See, when it's offering time, you just put your hand in the pocket and just... You try, in fact, our minds have been trained that when it's offering time, it's the smallest note in your pocket that you pick. Your fingers know the difference between the, the bills. So when you do like this, you know which one is the smallest note. You just pick it and then you squeeze it into the basket. God doesn't receive. God doesn't take. God, it is not acceptable. He will not take it. Church will receive it. The, the, church, the, 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 the finance department of the church will collect the money and use. But God will not accept he doesn't accept anything that they put on the altar. See, he killed Ananias and Sapphira during offering. Not because he was looking for money, no. <laughs> so, number one, X-ray. The number one picture of the X-ray is your relationship with money. How healthy is your relationship with money? Are you faithful in your giving to God? How much of your money serves God's purposes? Now listen to this. If your money doesn't serve God's purposes, it serves the devil's purposes by default. Can I say it again? If your money does not serve God's purposes, it serves the devil's purposes by default. Number two, your time. Now, when we talk about money, people say, it's my hard-earned money. And pastor is talking about it for more than 30 minutes. You know, the Christians in our churches don't give their time to God for the same reason they don't give their money to God. Because we were taught by the civilization in which we function that time is money. Every morning when we wake up, he gives us a free gift of 24 hours. There's nobody living on this earth because he's rich or because he's great or because he's president. His own day is 48 hours or 36 hours. We all 24. It's a free gift. No? And of the, of the 24 hours he gives us freely, he requires a minimum of 2 hours 40 minutes. That corresponds to what? The tight of your day. 2 hours 40 minutes given to the master. How do I know? Daniel in Babylon, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will pray three hours a day, right? One hour in the morning, one hour in the afternoon, one hour in the evening. They were not pastors. They were not church leaders. They were just believers that loved God. They, had, they were men that were working in the political arena, but they had a relationship with God. Three hours. When Jesus went to Gethsemane, he left his disciples one hour, prayed, came back, one hour, prayed, came back, one hour, prayed, three hours. So he required of all of us he requires a minimum of two hours, 40 minutes, if not three hours per day. But how many of us spend even one hour with him? I've done a survey in my country. Very few pastors even have 30 minutes of quiet time. They only pray when they are about to go and preach. The prostitute, the Holy Spirit. You need him only when you are about to preach. So he's a tool that you are using to make something happen in the conference so that they clap for you, the great man of God. How much of your time is devoted to God, to God's purposes and to God's service? You don't have time for God. You have time for every other thing. You know, when something is important in people's life, they take time to do it. There's nobody on this earth who is too busy his agenda is so full, he has not had time to sleep for the past two weeks. Is there anybody like that? No. 
There's nobody that is too busy that has not had time to eat for the past two weeks. Why? Because eating, sleeping, and some of these things are important. We always create time to do them. You know why you don't have time to spend with God? It's not important. It is not. Oh, talk to me. It's not. If it, were, if it was important, you would have made out time for it in your daily agenda. So your prayer life is next to zero. Your quiet time, you don't have time to be with him. The Bible says, eh, Psalm 91, he who dwells, not he who visits, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall do what? So let me tell you the ministers, please listen to me. You don't have to be running from Sokoto to Lagos looking for which man of God has anointed to impart on you. Create time to be with him. I didn't hear you. What did I say? Create time to be with him. See, no man of God will give you what God is not giving you. So you can travel and attend the great men of God's conference in Japan and go to Korea and go everywhere. Do all the prophetic actions. If God is not giving it to you, no man will give it to you. John the Baptist said, for no man shall ever receive anything except. So even what God will use us to impart on you when we pray for you, it has to come from him. If not, we will lay hands on you until you become bareheaded. Is it true? Yes. So how much of your time is given to God? One day I went to preach in a church. Travel from Yaounde to Douala. We got to Douala at the entrance of Douala at 4 p.m. The service was going to start somewhere around 6, 7. So I knew we'll get to the town, go to the hotel, shower, get ready for the service. But when we got to the entrance of the city, we were trapped in the traffic. Man, we stayed in the traffic until the service time was over. Yes, they were building the Japoma Stadium. That stadium in Douala. At that time, the road Yaounde Douala was here. We, uh, we stayed in the traffic for four and a half hours. When we got to church, it was 8.30 p.m. So when I came in, I was wearing my jean. That's the day I stopped traveling with jeans. Every time, every time I travel now, I wear my suit. I, I travel ready for preaching because you don't know what you meet on the way. So that day I was wearing my jeans and t-shirt. I knew I would get to the hotel. So I couldn't get to the hotel. I came to church. And then the pastor said, well, the apostle is here. We have waited. We're just going to give him some minutes so he can greet us. But tomorrow we're going to start the conference. So I took the microphone, greeted them, prayed for the people, and then I sat down. And then the pastor came back on the platform. And I said, well, we apologize. We have dragged the meeting longer tonight. But tomorrow we're not going to. I was kneeling down, I was still praying when he made that statement. I jumped from where I was and I took the microphone from him. I said, we do not apologize. We do not apologize for keeping you longer in the house of God. I said, pastor, this is the last time you ever apologize to them for keeping them in the house of God. These people, when they are watching soccer, they can stay on the, in front of a screen for four or five hours. Oh yeah. When Barca and Manchester United are playing, they wake up in the night at 2 a.m. to watch football, not to pray, to watch Messi. Who is he your relative? <laughs> but some of you, you know the story of all these great soccer players, you know how much their contract is, they left from this place to that. You know that, but you don't know your Bible. I told the pastor, we do not apologize. And if you're not happy, don't come back tomorrow. Now listen, this, you, you, some of you ask me, where, what is idolatry in this? Let me show you where idolatry is. Papa, the first church I told you started in the Garden of Eden, am I right? How many, time, how many days were they having, how, how often were they having services? Every day. Who was the pastor? God. Now God, as busy as he is, 
will leave his, his business in heaven every day and come down to have fellowship with Adam and Eve. The first church in the New Testament was the early church. How often, how often were they having services? Every day, the Bible said, every day they were... Huh? They were regular in church attendance. They were attending service. They were in the temple, breaking bread, praying, listening to the apostles. Every day. So where did we come from with the model that we have now service three times a day? A week. On Sundays, 9 to 11. And then Wednesdays or Tuesdays or Wednesdays, Bible studies, 5 to 7. And Friday, 5 to 7, prayer meeting. Then the rest of the week, what, what do they do? It's idolatry that made us, we have reduced the time we spend with God so much. Church was supposed to be every day. Every day they will come to church. In the Jewish culture, it's every, in fact, every morning they come to the, ch- to the temple, the priest will bless them before they go to work. And in the evening they come back, the priest will bless them before they go home. The early church began every, was meeting every day. They would do communion, they would break bread, they would pray, they would listen to it every day. And they continue daily with one accord in the temple. Not in homes, in the temple. And breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. This is the early church. Praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Am I right? So where did we come from with a model of three times a week? And the shorter it is, the better. You know, one day in, in my church, some years back, people came with a complaint that, uh, you know, when that is the one preaching, the service is always long. So they, when I met my wife, they said, no, you know, please, Talk to daddy so that, you know, when my wife started, it, I said, I've understood you. It's okay. I said, I know what to do. She said, what will you do? I said, I will not tell you. I know what to do. <laughs> so when we came the following Sunday, I made two announcements. I said, number one announcement, all the prayers in the church and all of that suspended. I heard your complaint. You say you want to pray with your families. You want to have time, you know. Family altar, blah, 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 blah. I said, I understand that. So I've granted your request. From tomorrow, Monday, no more praying in the sanctuary. You guys pray home. You know, when people don't have the discipline of coming to pray in the sanctuary, they will not pray in their homes. So I said, you guys pray at home every morning. Meet with your families around your family altar and pray. Read the Bible, pray, break bread, do. Okay? They say, Yes. When after I made the announcement, I said, now open your Bibles. Let's, it's time to preach. I opened the scripture and I preached 15 minutes. 15 minutes. When it was 15 minutes, I closed my Bible. I said, stand up. Let's pray. Lord, I bless your people. Take them home safely. I bless your week in Jesus' name. I say amen. They, all, they refuse to say amen. <laughs> I said, you complain that the service is long, that I preach long. So I've decided that I'm going to preach the kind of sermon... I'll preach sermonettes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes max, and then you go home. I said, in Jesus' name, amen. I closed my Bible, I took my stuff, and I went to my office. Apostle, I promise you, the same people stayed around church. You know, on Sundays, we have a little market where people come and sell drinks, and then all these vegetables. The same people. They stayed around church until one o'clock. They were eating and making discourse outside. I was in my office, and then when I came out, I found all, almost all of them. I said, hey, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> so it is the presence of God that is a problem to you. You see, when we are not in the presence of God, you can stay around church for hours talking and eating around and, and discussing things that have nothing to do with the kingdom of God. So it's because you don't like God. You know, Jesus said in John chapter 5, I know you don't have the love of God in you. Even though you come to my meetings, even though, John, I see John chapter, chapter 5, I think verse 40 or 41. Check that for me, please. We're talking about time. 
How much of your time is given to God? As a minister, huh? But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. It's Jesus talking to the people. They are coming to his meeting. They are coming to his crusade. They are attending church. And he says, I know you. I've checked. I've scanned all of you. You don't love God. You're just coming to church. So what I'm doing here is scanning you and telling you how much of God, how much of the God, love of God you have in you. It's not in the words you speak and how much you talk to God and, and worship and cry. See, God is not impressed by your tears. He's impressed by these actions. When Abraham took up the knife, no? God said, wow. Abraham, you would do that? He said, stop, stop. Now I know. So it's not your tears during worship, you kneel down and cry. It doesn't move God until you go to practical steps, practical actions. So I told them, from tomorrow, no more prayer. So I told my, mom, I told my wife, you know, this is what we're going to do. Every morning at five, we're going to leave our house and just choose one of the church leaders and go meet with them so we can pray with them around their family altar. I knew exactly what I was doing. <laughs> so Monday morning, I told the children, hey, you guys pray. We're going to have morning devotion in so-so and so's elder's house. We drove to the house some minutes to six. Normally, the prayer in church was five to seven. So some few minutes to six, we got to the gate and I rang the bell. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. And then I saw the husband, he still half dressed, <laughs> up in the window with sleep in his eyes. <laughs> and then he runs back to the room and tells his wife, Daddy is here. So he, he comes out, he's half asleep, half awake. <laughs> Say, Daddy. You're coming this early. Is everything all right? I said, I thought you want to have family devotion around family altar. So we came to have prayer with you guys. You guys are still sleeping. It's past six. I said, so what happened? He said, no, last night we watched a movie. And <laughs> I told my wife, it is to you they came to complain that I preached long. I forced them to come to church to pray. I said, you see your people. I said, okay, wake your family up. We're already here. We'll pray. <laughs> the next day, Tuesday, we went to another one. When I ran the bed, thing down, he opened the window, <laughs> ran back to the room. <laughs> then the wife came. Daddy, is everything all right? I said, everything is all right. We just, I came for prayer. I thought five, we had agreed that in the morning you guys will have family. But I know that you do not have the love of God in you. You will complain that the pastor is preaching long. You complain that he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. But it's the x-ray of your heart. How much of your time is devoted to God, to God's service, to being with him? As ministers, Mark chapter 3, verse 13, he says, he went up to the mountain and called those, he, those who he wanted and they came to him. And he chose 12. And he got God up onto, into a mount and called it unto him whom he would. And they came unto him. Verse 4, 15. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him. They are first calling. Listen to me. Your first calling as a man of God is to first be with him. Everything that you go out there doing in the name of ministry that does not emanate from your being with him is dead works. It smells nasty in the nostrils of God. He ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach with power to heal the sick and cast out devils. You seen that? Your first ministry is to be with him. You know why he made us full time? The reason he made us full time is not because we are lazy. It's not because he wanted us to just stay around, watch movie, and then on Wednesday you take your Bible and look for one scripture to go and, and tell the church, and tell one story to the people. He made you full time because he wants to have spend time with you. Hello? 
See, in Israel, everybody knew that you couldn't see Elisha any other day except on the Sabbath day and on new moons. If it wasn't Sabbath or new moon, new moon, you couldn't see Elisha. Why? He was in a secret place. See, when Naaman came to look for Elisha, he couldn't see Naaman. You know why he couldn't see him? Naaman came on a wrong day. On a day when the man of God doesn't go out. See, if you want to be a relevant man of God in your generation, if you want to walk with God, you can be everywhere, moving around from house to house, fellowship to fellowship, you know, sit around the office all day, people come and tell you stories of their dreams and their whatever not. See, no, you are more useful to your people, to the people you are leading, to the people you are ministering to in the secret place than sitting in the office and doing church administration. Naaman came on a wrong day, on a day that Elisha doesn't see any human being. And with all due respect, Elisha is not going to come out. See, Elisha sent Gehazi, said, go tell him that it's General Naaman, five-star general, came all the way from Syria to come and see him. With the letters of recommendation from the king of Syria and the king of Israel. And Elisha will say, go tell him. To dip himself seven times and go home. <laughs> and 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 and, and Naaman said, "No, wait. You tell him also that the offering I brought for the man of God. See, the theologians have calculated the offering to be worth six million U.S. dollars. Now, do the calculation and see how much is it in naira. Six million U.S. dollars." That Naaman brought to give us a prophet's offering to Elisha. And Elisha says, go tell him, if there are poor people in his country, he should go and give it to them as sadaka. Even that offering will not make Elisha leave the secret place to come and talk to him. How many pastors in Nigeria will hear that kind of offering at their gate? And they will not tell God to wait. Say, God, wait, I'll come back. I'll come and pray later. But Elisha is not going to come out. You know why? He's talking to the one that created the whole universe. That can give him that money and even more anytime he wants. But you know, the Shunammite woman also came on a day that wasn't Sabbath. Right? When her son died, she told her husband, I'm going to see the man of God. The husband said, how will you see him? It's neither Sabbath nor new moon. How will you see him? She said, I'm going. And she went. And she succeeded to see the man of God, even though it wasn't Sabbath. You know why? Because she had a covenant relationship with this man of God. In the days where Elisha was nothing and nobody knew him, his ministry had not yet sprung out to the public. The woman, this woman was the first to see and recognize the grace of God. And she, she made a, an upper room and said, man of God, you can come and pray here. So that created a bond. See, Elisha's exclamation when she heard that the Shunammite woman was outside. He said, this woman is in trouble and God didn't tell me. God, how did you do this? That this particular woman can be in this trouble and you don't tell me. No, 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 something is not right. I mean, Elisha literally sent a query letter to God for not informing him that the Shunammite woman was in trouble. It's because of their covenant relationship. But Elisha will not come out for Naaman. Not even for the, three, the six million dollar offering. How I pray that God will raise in Nigeria again. How I pray that God will raise in our generation again. Ministers of God that will not be bought with money. That will not sell the grace of God upon their lives. That will not prostitute to the altars of Baal and Balaam. To the spirit of Jezebel. Because they want to make money. I pray that you be that kind of minister that will despise the gifts of men because you know the God that has called you. You know, we go preaching on platforms where we get the biggest honorarium. I tell pastors, that word is not in your Bible. Please don't use it. It's a dirty word. You seen honorarium in the Bible? Huh? It's nowhere in the Bible. You, 
you are not for sale. Tell your neighbor, you are not for sale. The grace of God upon your life is not for sale. And the ministry God has given you is not for sale. See, if you walk with a living Messiah, you will get to that place where money has no value at all. See, Daniel, tomorrow I'm going to tell you more. Daniel got to the place where they couldn't, there was nothing they could give him. Daniel chapter 5, when that handwriting appeared on the, on the wall, many, many take care of us. The magicians came, they couldn't interpret it. Then they called Daniel, they called for Daniel. The king said, are you this Daniel? They said that you have this, this, this. He said, yes, I'm the one. He said, so if you would decode this and interpret for me, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to give you this, and I'm going to appoint you third personality in this empire. He said, Daniel, he told the king, please stop insulting me. Your money and your gifts, give them to someone else. I'm going to interpret. Nevertheless, I'm going to interpret. He said, and this is the writing that was written. Many, many take of us, right? You know the discourse. Verse 12 downwards, and he said, give it to someone else. But as for the writing, I'm going to interpret for them. I'm going to interpret them for you. It's for free. Tell your neighbor it's for free. free. Freely have you been given free, free? Have you received freely give? This hunger for money in the heart of a minister is a gateway to idolatry and to perversion. Until you have dealt with the love of money and the love of fame and the desire for recognition, you are not ready to walk with the living Messiah. Apostle, one day, a pastor came. One of my sons in the ministry came to my house. Came with his wife. He said, Papa, I came to ask you, what is the secret, your secret for this successful ministry you have? I said to him, the secret to succeed in ministry is to seek God, know God, and obey God. He said, Papa, say it again. I said, seek God, know God, and obey God. Those are the three things you need to do if you want to succeed in ministry. And he said, Papa, is that all? I said, yes. Then he looked at me and said, I don't know why you, you fathers in this land, you are so stingy. <laughs> I said, stingy with what? He said, I knew that you would not tell me the real secret. I said, oh, so there's, you, there's a real secret. He said, yeah, I know. All of you, this, all these travelings across the globe, you can't, it's not just seek God, <laughs> know God, and obey God. <laughs> So when I started talking to him, I was sitting with my wife in our sitting room. Then his wife fell at my feet and she began to cry, Papa, please save my husband. Papa, save my husband. I said, what is it? He said, my, my husband is enticed by this prophet. In fact, he's been visiting them lately. I am the one that forced him that let's go and see Daddy Nyangok and talk to him. And then he told me, that other day when we came to see you, we were driving out of your house. On the main road, we saw this other pastor passing, and then he stopped his car and reversed. He said, hey, how are you, man of God? He said, I'm doing fine. He said, where are you coming from? He said, no, we want to see Daddy Nyangok. And then this pastor told him, this thing you are looking for, Daddy Nyangok cannot give you. Uh. And then I asked him, so what are you looking for? He said, hey, Papa, but I'm a young minister now. I need money. I need fame. And I need power. <laughs> I said, okay. And he says, so this other pastor that he met at the junction told him, this thing that you are looking for, Daddy Nyango cannot give you. Have you not heard that he went to America and he died, he went to heaven? <laughs> and since he came back from that, his American trip, he's now preaching one gospel that we are not understanding. This thing that you are looking for, he can't give you. So the pastor said, follow me. So he followed the man, the man to his office. And the guy said, see, open the drawer. In Yaoundé, money is scarce in Cameroon like you have no idea. Money, 
Especially in Yaoundé. The church in Douala can even have money. Yaoundé, civil servants, they don't give offering. If you are serving God in Yaoundé, you just have to love God. Like This guy is pastoring in Yaoundé. He opened his drawer like this. It was a Monday. Opened the drawer and said, see, 15 million safer. I said, this is the offering for just yesterday. He said, we, we make like this every, every Sunday. So you're following Papa Nyango. He can't give you anything. So this, this pastor, my, this son of mine, who is looking for the secrets for success. So he asked this man, so what must I do? He said, I need to go and introduce you to our mentor. You join our, our association. I introduce you to our mentor. True story. This is my witness. And the wife is telling me the story, begging me. He said, Papa, save my husband. Save my husband. So she asked the husband, she asked, he asked the man, so what must I do to join your... He said, no, no, you, you're not killing nobody. We just, I will just introduce you to my mentor. I know you don't have the money. But to join our association, there's an amount, an amount we must pay as caution fee. But since you don't have it, I will pay for you. Because you are my... See, he says, see, you people started preaching when we were still in the nightclub. So we're still, I was still a guy in the nightclub. You were already a pastor. Look at the kind of car you're driving. And look at, look at your house. Look at your congregation. Doesn't look like anything. And we just started yesterday. And when we see you, the elders, that have started doing this thing long before us, I feel really sorry for you. So I want to help you, you know, come out of this. See, eh? So the, oh, yes. I like the, I like the. It's true, it's true story. See, when I watch a movie, I was. So the guy said, so watch. He said, no, I'll pay for you. And then. So that day they were in my house telling me the story. So I asked the wife, so has your husband signed in for that? She said, well, he, she told that pastor to give him time to reflect. So that day she, she forced him to come to my house because she wanted me to arrest him so he doesn't go and sign. So I spoke to him that day. He knelt down and cried and said, Daddy, help me, oh. To be honest with you, I'd already say yes to that guy that I will come back. I needed just to inform my wife. So he's been trying to convince the wife that, see, you've, we've been suffering. No, money is not coming. So just say yes. So, because I'm, doing, I'm going in for this. Just, I'm doing it for you. So that you too, someday we too can go to Singapore for vacation, go to Dubai. When you hear other men of God, I went to Dubai with my wife. We slept in a hotel. We... See, it is that thing in your heart, oh. If you don't pluck it out, someday you will make a golden calf. Now, let me tell you this, and I've, saying, I've said it everywhere. I've said it. See, personally, I have no ambition to be rich. It's not, in fact, I don't have an ambition. As you see me here, I have no ambition. If any at all, I want to please God. I'm not looking forward to the day I will be rich. If someday I become rich, God would have decided to make me rich. But it's not part of my, you know. One day I told my congregation, you know what, I'm living my best life now. And they said, God forbid, daddy, we, we haven't bought you a private jet yet. We haven't finished building our cathedral. I say, all of these things have nothing to do with me being fulfilled. I'm fulfilled serving God because I know he is happy with what I'm doing. And I can do this all my life and die without even buying a car. See, until you circumcise that ambition in your heart, you are not ready to walk with the, the living God. But you know, we prayed with this gentleman that day. I, I spoke to him. In fact, if I could beat him with my hands to remove this thing in him. But I couldn't beat him. I could only talk to him. He cried. We all cried. And they left. And that was the last day. Never saw him again. I have bad news for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I have bad news. He went and signed. I asked the wife, so, what, what? Do? He said, no, the conditions are simple. I will take you to our mentor. Then we will take you somewhere. 
and then you will meet our the grandmaster that will do they will just do a little right he's going to pray it's an impartation actually he was just going to do impartation over you and then before you know it boom your eyes open your ears open you can now do all the prophesying you can call people's names give their colors of whatever not tell the card numbers and and if you call for money anywhere the money is they will bring it to you so he said he asked the pastor so what would be the huh? I, I, you are, he's giving that to me in exchange of what? He said, no. Two things that you will be doing, part of the money that you get, the offering that you collect, you keep 60% and you give them 40. They will make you get, I mean, if you get 15 million every weekend, you can give them 40% without feeling that you, it's, I mean, if you left from the place where you could only make 100,000 a week or 200,000 a week to get him 15 million, you are talking about big money. So you give them 40%, you keep 60 because you have to run the, continue running. That's the first condition. The second condition is that every three months you have to go and renew the altar. So what does it mean to renew the altar? You have to go and sleep with a mad woman. So where do you find her? He said, no, the mentor will tell you. When it's time, they will send you a message. You say, okay. Uh, go to Ghana or go to Sudan. In so so and so place, there's a mad woman. You go there. So the man, the friend told him, you know, sometimes I disappear and I'm going for a retreat. Actually, it's, it's not a retreat like what you, you, you go and pray. And, and, and please, when you are meeting with this mad woman, she, she mustn't fall pregnant. If she becomes pregnant of you, then one person will die in your house, either your wife or your child. So the best is find a mad woman that is in her period because the connection, the contact with that blood makes the altar even stronger. See, I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm saying this in a word, in raw words. Because most of you are, are young ministers and you, you want to... You know, you go about collecting, laying on of hands, mantles and handkerchiefs and oils from people you have no... You, you know why, Apostle Roman, you you know that. You know why in the Bible before they introduce a man, they will say this one begat, this one begat, this one. You know all this begat, begat that we refuse to read in the Bible? You don't know the importance of the begat, begat. <laughs> Listen to me. The begat that you don't want to read is just tracing the root of the anointing so that when you are receiving this man, you know where he is coming from. So any man of God that has not begat in his lineage, don't trust him. Because anybody can come on the pulpit and manifest something. So what is your own spiritual lineage? Who begat you? Who begat the one that begat you? Can we trace it to four, three, four, five generations? If we can't, then there's a big question mark on your anointing. But because our generation will only celebrate success. Provided he's successful, provided he's making waves, provided he's giving money, provided he's on television, provided he has private jet and he can run around, he can go anywhere, he can sleep with anything. I mean, in fact, today, internet has made it so easy. We know the story of everybody from anywhere. I remember those days when in the church, if the pastor was only suspected of looking at a sister with some inordinate eyes, they would suspend him. But today, the GOs, they sleep with all the sisters in the choir. It is known by everybody, and that's when the church even increases. Doesn't it tell you something? The altar there is it's not God's altar at all. The more they double into all this immorality and all this dirty stuff, their fame is increasing, their money is increasing, their glory is increasing. And the followers justify it. The evil they see. Are you here? I'm trying to screen your heart. Now, at, at the end of this session today, you have to choose whether you want to do ministry or you want to please God. See, some of you, 
God will ask you to go and do ministry in one village that is lost somewhere in the forest. There's no internet there. There's no... You have to choose whether you want to do that or you want to go to Lagos or Abuja. Hello? So, number three, we're talking about your talents and your gifts and your talents. We talked about your money. We talked about your time. Now, let's talk about your gifts and talents. See, the gifts and talents you have, God gave them to you. The talents you got, you got them at birth, gifts came along the way. But all of that, he gave them to you to glorify him. It was never for sale. Hello? Now I want to ask the choir people. Can you stand choir people? The beautiful voices you have. You bought them in which shop? Answer me. Where did you buy the beautiful voices you have? Nowhere. Who gave them to you? He gave you to do what? To serve him. Now see, if you market your voice, you are not a worshiper, you are an idolater. Anytime, any day, you will put a price tag on your singing, you are a prostitute. You see that woman there is my wife. Whatever she has, a prostitute has. The, the pleasures and the services she can render to me, a prostitute can do exactly the same. True? The difference between her and the prostitute out there is that this relationship is based on love and the relationship outside there is interest. With a prostitute, I have to pay. Here, I don't have to pay nothing. True? Anytime you put a price tag on the gifts, the anointings, and the calling God has given you, you become a prostitute. Apostle, I will tell you the truth. When I went to heaven the first time, he rebuked me sharply. He said, I give you a gift, and the church has prostituted the gift I've given you. I'm telling you the truth before Jesus, the Messiah. And I know you know him. And you can inquire of him. I could call for offering. In a church where they say, this church doesn't give at all. I could come to a rural village church and make an, a call for offering. And they will, people will bring money and put on the altar. Like the pastors in the neighborhood will say, we have never seen this kind of money in this community. It's something I know God has given me. It's been like. So at the time, I was invited all over the world. When they wanted to raise funds for nya, 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 they'll call for me. Apostle Nyango, come and help us. And the Lord said, I give you that gift that you prostituted it. You let your brothers prostitute the gift. See, I never did it for sale. God knows. I've never taken money from anywhere for preaching. Even before I went to heaven, I never done that. But, you know, they took advantage that I had this, and they would use it to raise money. One night, in a place, in a nation I will not call here, made a call for offering. 750 million safer. One Thursday night. He told me, you prostitute. And I'm, I'm, I'm warning you, if you do that again, that's why I'm careful about offering, raising, taking offering now. Ooh. Until I hear from him, I'm not going to do the offering for, you know, some now when I go to some conferences, they say, Apostle, can you do some offering for, I say, I'll ask him, if he gives me permission, I, I will do that, but I don't want to do it. If you ask me, I don't want to do it. I want to teach the people so that you know, now let me say, I still have a few minutes to, before I close. Listen to this. Three characteristics of an offering that God will never receive. Can I tell you? You get more in the books. If you love, the, love yourself, please buy these books because there are many things that are in those books that I will not tell you in this conference because I don't have time. 
Number one characteristic of an offering that God will never receive. If that offering is not prompted by a heart of love. See, anytime you come to God to give him something because you want something from him. I know they taught us that the bigger your sacrifice, forget about that, it's a lie from the pit of hell. If you are giving to God to purchase or to bribe God into giving you something or doing something to you, you are prostituting the altar of God. And that offering, God doesn't receive. Please examine what I'm telling you in the light of the scriptures. Number one, if it is not given out of a heart of love, Peter said to, the, to Simon the magician, may your money perish with you because you thought in your heart that the gift of God could be purchased with money. He didn't say it with his mouth, but in his heart, it was a way of if the prompting in your heart when you are bringing that seed, when you are bringing that offering, is not the love that you have for God. See, if I, can, if, if I tell the people here that I have an anointing, if you put a hundred dollars in this offering basket, I will pray tomorrow it will be one million dollars in your account. Even Muslims will come from their shops to come and put money here. And they are not putting money because they love God, they are putting money because they love money. Some of your sowing and reaping that you do in church have, have nothing to do with the love of God. It only has something to do with the love of money. True? Oh, they will not give the big seed until you promise them that you're going to pray and something else is going to happen to them. So what they want is there's something else that is going to happen to them, not God that they will make happy. So if your offering has not... If the intention of that offering is not to make God happy, that I'm a son of God and I'm happy to give my substance to God. He doesn't take it. Church, now you see, let me tell you this. Sowing and reaping is working for even for Muslims. So it's not a Christian practice. It's a universal practice. It's a universal law. As long as the earth remains, as long as we are working on this, anyone that sows will reap. Whether righteously or unrighteously, if you sow, you will reap. If you give, you will receive. Hello? Uh -huh. So, but, Daddy, I have been giving and receiving. Yes, you will give and receive because it's a universal law. Muslims will give and receive. Unbelievers give and receive. If you are generous, if you give, it will come back to you. It has no respect for religion. It's the law of creation. As long as the earth remains. So the difference between our giving and their giving is that we are giving to God because we love him. And when he smells our offering, he doesn't smell money. He smells the heart, our heart of love towards him. If that's not the case, it's prostitution. God is not in it. Hey, choir, sit down. Thank you. I'll come back to you. Number two, any offering you give with hesitation and... Murmuring doesn't accept. So all of that stems from your heart. It's not what you have in your hand. It's the state of your heart when you're giving. When they say he's offering that, he said money again. But you still remove your whatever not and put. The moment you say money again, he doesn't, he doesn't want your money. In fact, the day God will make our noses exercise, when he will exercise our nostrils, we'll be able to smell your offering and say, hey, you, the gentleman in the yellow shirt, Go home with your offering. Don't put it here. I'm telling you the truth. Because we are the guardians of this altar. He said, Malachi 1, he said, you priests have said that the altar of God is contemptible. It's this despicable. And they said, what? In what? He said, because you allow anybody to just drop anything. See, in our church, our church is not big. Oh. And we are not even trying to make it big. We're just trying to make it the way God wants it. Every Sunday when it's offering time, I say, in this church, you don't have to give offering. You are not under compulsion to give offering. But if you want to give, please be careful of what you drop on this altar. Because the man talking to you is responsible for whatever you drop here. If your offering will not, is not given out of heart of love, please don't give. We are not in need of money. Oh. Not God, nor me. We don't, we, are not, we don't need money. So we are not looking for just some money to come in. No. 
See, the, this conference bills will be paid whether you give offering or not. Tomorrow I will tell you about my second visit to heaven. And the second visit deals with issues related to money. You will like it. It's deliverance. True deliverance, I'm telling you. So number two, if you give out of hesitation and murmuring, he doesn't want it. Number three, listen to this one. Number three, if your offering is not, is, is not correspondent to your prosperity, God doesn't receive. He must correspond. First, first Corinthians 16, verse 2, I think. He said, everyone must give according to his prosperity. Meaning, if you are at a place where you can give a thousand naira and you give a hundred, you have insulted God. Like I just said, if Mama Dina gives me a packet of biscuits at my birthday, she has despised me, she has insulted me. True? At my age, she cannot give me biscuits. If she wants to give me something, she has to look at me and say, oh, Apostle, what can I give Apostle? Maybe she will buy me a private jet. <laughs> <laughs> no? She will give something that looks like a gift to the Apostle. No? She will either buy me a very good perfume, or a nice suit, or a beautiful tie, or a shoe, or package something nice that will be fit, or give me a biro that looks like something that Apostle can wear. No? And she can't give me biscuits. So whenever you're giving your offering, God is looking at you and you're looking at God. So if you take 100 naira in your hand and we are not seeing it and you squeeze it in your hand and dance and drop in the basket, God looks at you and says, you, you give me 100 naira. I just gave you 500,000 naira yesterday. And now to come and thank me, you are bringing 1,000 naira and you're squeezing it so that nobody sees what you're dropping in the basket. You just insulted God. You just defiled the altar. That offering is not acceptable. Amen? Amen, Amen somebody? Amen. So, we're talking about your gifts and your talents. See, musicians and singers started charging for their performance in churches and in conferences because the pastors were first the ones that began to charge for their ministry. In Cameroon, like in Nigeria, even more in Nigeria and Cameroon and everywhere, the richest pastors are the most difficult to see and the most difficult to invite. First, how will you get to them? Number two, you don't have what it takes for them to move to come to your, your bush. Yet, they say that God made them rich. The money, they are rich in, they are wealth is counted in millions if not in billions of naira and whatever not but they will not come to you because for them to come to you when they send you their, their bill all your ministry it takes you like 10 years to gather that kind of money <laughs> so you can't host them in your town there is no hotel that can accommodate them there is no airplane where a, 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 a airport where their aeroplane can land you know, when they tell you how much, of, how much of honorarium you must give them, you don't have it. So it is called evangelical capitalism. It's called what? Capitalism. The richer pastors are, get richer and the poor pastors get poorer. It's prostitution. Now, Apostle, this is my take. If I become a billionaire, by God makes me a billionaire in, in, in Sefa, in Naira, in dollars, and whatever, then I should be able to go to one village in Nigeria and help a pastor. Like I hear a Macedonian cry, some pastors in, what is the village you called yesterday? One village. Huh? Akpa. I will go to Akpa and meet one struggling pastor and just go and bless him. Because I have an anointing. If I enter Aqua and the people here, the apostle is here, people will come. So just my presence will be a blessing to this pastor in the village who is struggling. I can bless him just by my presence. But you won't go because you're a big pastor. You can't go to where there are no, if they can't gather 20,000 people, you can't come. Because your anointing doesn't function in crowds that are less than 20,000.
It's all business. It's all market. It's called evangelical capitalism. Shall we all stand? We're talking about idolatry. Circumcising your heart for an effective ministry. So that you don't come to God and he's smelling something else. Your heart must be pruned. See, you will see idols. See, one day, we went to Douala with my wife. Had a pastor's meeting. And we finished the meeting late. We were supposed to drive back to Yaounde, but we couldn't because the meeting ended late. So I called my sister that is in Douala. I said, we are in town. We came for a meeting where we... So she said, where are you? I said, we are even not far from your house. So she said, oh, please come home. I even have good fish for you. I like fish. So I got good fish for you. I said, okay, we're coming. We went to her house. We ate and we were happy. Then she said, daddy, where are you sleeping? I said, we're going to the hotel. She said, you, every time you come to Douala, you never want to sleep in my house. Please sleep here today. She forced us to stay in the night. So she gave us her room. We accepted. We went into the room. I was wearing a jacket and a suit like this. So I went to the, the room and I was removing my tie in front of the mirror and I made a loud cry. Ah! She was in the other room. She heard me cry. She thought maybe Corin had shocked me or something. And she came running, Daddy, any problem? I said, yes, come and see. And she ran into the room. I said, come and see idols in your room. And she was trembling. She said, man, you made me, you scared me. I said, you better get scared now because when you see her, it's not this fear you're talking about. She was trembling. I, I said, see, rich watches, 16 of them. 16 rich watch, watches on her cupboard. I said, my sister, all these watches is just for you to read time. She said, I say, it's, it's called idolatry. And I said, wait, wait, wait. I said, take your calculator. She took the calculator. I said, come, come. How much is this one? She gave the price. I said, write it. This one. When we sum them up, we we're talking about millions. And I listened to this. And I told her, these your rich watches alone can organize a major crusade in this town and save hundreds of people. But you are burning it. See, the sun. She said, no, you see, we ladies, when we buy this kind of, you buy a dress of this color, you want a watch that will match. I say, how about the perishing souls? When they talk about evangelism in your church, how much money do you give? Maybe you squeeze out 5,000 or 1,000 or 10,000 and give. But the, the list of our watches was like 35, 40,000. I said, you see, you burn your, God's money on futilities. You know, we buy the things we do not need with the money we do not have to impress the people that we do not like. So when you go home today, some of you, if you open your wardrobe, you will see idols. Why line up in your wardrobes? You keep buying and you will not stop buying because there's something in you that makes you happy when you buy and it makes you sad when you give that same. See, when you give that same money to God, it's a waste. When you buy, or you, you buy some suits and you will not even wear. You, buy, you wear them once and they just stay there. You have so many of them. Yet people in your neighborhood, in your family are perishing and going to hell. You want God to bless you so you can buy your privacy so that the people that were laughing at you will see how good your God is. Whether you get a private jet or not, God is good. Whether you ever build a big house or not, God is, God is not going to be less good because you didn't build that house. Shall we lift our hands to the Father? I want you to pray from your heart of hearts. After you've heard this word, I don't need to give you a prayer point. Apostle is going to come up and lead us. The question this morning was, what is the name of your God? Is it money? Is it fame? Is it success? Is it traveling abroad? Is it visibility? What is it that you are looking for? And now this is a moment of consecration. You don't need human words to build the prayer to interface with God right now. The 
Holy Ghost and your spirit must have dropped a witness something that needs to die something that needs to give way so that God can have his way in your temple and just in case you have identified it begin to bring that altar of Baal down begin to bring it down begin to bring it down right now what is that thing standing in the way standing in the way standing in the way obstructing God from gaining the handle over your soul what is that thing that you will die to protect you will die you will die to keep you can give it away right now I like you to go before him forget about the person sitting by your side it's a moment between you and God it's a moment between you and God what you do as ministry who who commissioned it from where did you get that pattern my son every day father draw me never draw My song every day, Father, draw me nearer, draw me nearer, nearer to Thee. You can kneel, you can stand, you can lie on the ground, but it's a moment between you and God tonight.
there is a minister of the gospel here you went to receive demonic help to assist you to do ministry and Satan has plunged you into confusion instead now if you are sincere you'll be delivered anywhere you are sitting make your way to the front please. my son every day God, oh, me now listen listen you also have a choice to sit back but it's on record that you were given the opportunity we have 12 minutes to shut down and the reason why we're even delaying for 12 minutes is because of you you were advised to seek help from Satan you got some stuff but instead of you having help you've been thrown into confusion My song every day, my song. I am waiting for that minister. And my song every day. My song every day. My song every day. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Nearer to thee. One more time now. And my song every day. witnesses that I gave that minister of the gospel the opportunity to repent and to be delivered. Lord, we give you thanks, we give you praise. We, we cast out every idol. And today we, we renew our covenant with you that will serve your will will serve your pleasures to the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. So in the moment of time, the offering baskets will go around and those that are participating online, you will have account details to work with to be part of that, this aspect of the worship. Hallelujah. Now, the minister that refused to come out, don't come to the office. Don't come. Don't come. Don't come. You will no longer be delivered in this conference. You will need to look for another opportunity for your deliverance. Do not come to the office. Cast your seed. The moment you finish casting your seed, begin to consecrate yourself afresh to the Lord as we bring this session to a close. And we're going to kick off tomorrow again by 8 a.m. The opening prayers will begin in earnest. The opening prayers will begin in earnest. 
by 8 a.m. in the morning. How many of you received the ministry of our guests from Cameroon? Amen. And my song every day, my song. I also saw one of my friends in the congregation, Dr. Okeze from South Africa. You are most welcome. Amen. Are we done with the offerings? All right, so if you are done with the offerings, you can rise on your feet as we shut down. 8 a.m. will begin with prayers. But take our time, take our time to consolidate the things that the Lord is doing in the place of prayer. There are new covenants you need to make with God, new decisions. There are adjustments that you need to make. And so in your quiet time, don't just get carried away. Maintain your focus and seek for that which God is doing to be perfected in your life life. Hallelujah. Let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace 